Hello and welcome to episode 108 of the Lost Spark podcast. Before we start the podcast, I have some very sad news um, for you. And unfortunately, Darren has decided to step away from the Lost Spark pod. Um, we wish him well, of course, and he will be missed. And I'm sure that we'll all be able to catch up with him online. Don't forget, he's with Anita on all platforms. Um, but don't worry, the Lost Spark podcast will continue. And joining me in rotation will be uh, Spark favourite James, friend of the show Manny, friend of the friend of the show Matt, and ex AV forums and d-pad joys steve carter so this week joining me it's the swashbuckling pizza connoisseur of Bunneton. it's mr james thomas <laughs> hello does that mean i swashbuckle pizzas yes well i was going to say bunny loving swashbuckling pizza connoisseur but then it sounded like you did all of those at once and that could be cruel i guess <laughs> I, don't know, I, I, I think the bunnies would learn to love pizza after a while it's every, everyone yes. should learn to love pizza after a while so. <laughs> have you tried have you tried feeding pizza to the bunny or is that just like really irresponsible bunny I, owners i, I believe yeah, that, that, there would be people knocking on the door to take the bunnies away if we started doing that, I think. <laughs> Although one of our rabbits would probably just eat anything you put in front of her anyway. So uh. Right, <laughs> just including the box, if there was ever a pizza delivery box. And oh, just oh, yes, kind of, yes, just yeah. wrap it up. <laughs> We, uh, we actually had friends around last night for pizza, and she was just snuffling around the edge of the kitchen, waiting for any like crumbs to be dropped or to hoover up any little crumbs she found. So, like oh, a tiny, superb. fluffy vacuum cleaner. Yeah, exactly. It's a very kind of very almost dog like. You know, it's like my parents have always kind of had dogs, and the dogs always used to do that. They'd go by my sister when she was younger because my sister always kind of dropped things. She was a very kind of uh, <laughs> she was a very, <laughs> she was she was very very she was very kind of uh, uh, she kind of very motion she was very motioned when she was eating. So the dog would just like sit by her her uh, her table just, just kind of make knowing sure <laughs> something would come down to it, knowing something's going to drop at any point. So anyway, James. <laughs> anyway, James. How are you? How has your week been? It's been very good. It's been very good. Actually, continuing the food theme, went to a food festival in Birmingham on Friday night. Um, oh, awesome. down, down near the Custard Factory, which is of, uh, a bit of a, a trendy, arty place, uh, just on the outskirts of Birmingham City. It's in. They've, um, they've started doing, like, every Friday night, they take over a little bar, little cul-de-sac area, and just bring in loads of uh, street food wagons, which is always oh, wow. nice. But, uh, and then once a month, they, uh, they shut off the entire road outside that area as well and so this was one of the ones we went to and there was probably just like uh, about 12 15 sort of like different food wagons that we could choose from and uh it was an absolute glorious evening of just like wandering around having the odd beer and uh choosing what snacks to uh chew on next that's so cool that's fantastic so so what kind of what kind of food did you go for uh, i ended up going on the the best kebab i've ever had this is like right connoisseur kebabs i mean i guess yes. uh, during my uni days i you know i think i like everyone had uh, the odd kebab coming back at uh, sort of midnight or so or and just to, just to fill the hole fill the hole at that mm-hmm. point but um this this was glorious i, I ali always laughs at me because i lose the ability to describe food like i <laughs> i tend to have like three levels of food appreciation um <laughs> and <laughs> just <laughs> Just sort of like that level of going, I'll definitely have that again, or I'm not touching that with a barge pole. Um, yes. So this kebab was like this, like really nice, like dry aromatic spices that were in there. Some really good, uh, some meat had some halloumi stuffed in there as well, which is always going to be a win. Um, but dear God, like Ali, Ali, just Ali kept hearing like that. That was the best kebab I ever had. That was the best kebab. <laughs> what was so good about it? It was just the best kebab. <laughs> but why? That's so can't, cool. It's, I, I, it was I just good though, can't describe had, it. It's just really yeah. good. It's just... Um, but they had like loads of loads of wagons around as well. So like, um, Ali had a, um, oh, what's what's the Canadian delicacy? I say delicacy. Oh, poutine. One, yes, delicacy. Right. It's chips and gravy. It's I, I don't, <laughs> they've cheese. pushed that up. And yeah, a bit of weird <laughs> cheese tucked in. So um, we had some of that between us. We had some polenta fries. Uh, they had a waffle wagon there as well, which is good as well. So wow, everything. Yeah, and not it was a really nice waffle wagon because it wasn't just waffles topped with uh, whipped cream. They had mm. waffles topped with uh, cheesecake. They like what? squirted it out in a big little pattern, and uh, yeah, just tasty as anything. Oh, this sounds like heaven in Birmingham. It's just like so. This is like once a month they go. They just have this big, almost like kind of like street food party. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think every week they have a cut down version where three or four wagons turn up. But yeah, once a month they shut off the road and everyone gets invited, and it's right next to a few bars, so they uh, they get to reap the benefits as well. That's just fantastic. That's superb. Yeah, yeah. We, to top it all off as well, we found out there's a crazy golf course that's opened <laughs> up a stone's throw from it. Like with a good arm, you could hit it with a tennis ball from the food wagons. Um, this, it's called Ghetto Golf. 
And nice. if you have a look at it online, it's a proper grown-ups um, crazy golf to the point where they've got like neon uh, lights uh, that are basically lining out the golf course to make it look like a Sonic course. So you know those like the loop the loops where they have it all. Um, so like I can't think what it is. Uh, the um, in Green Hill Zone, that's it. The yes. very early stages, they've got lights and um, uh, uh, ultraviolet uh, paint to make it just like look like Sonic has gone for a rave. And uh, every hole seems to be just customed on a different theme, as far as I can tell. So we're desperately trying to get tickets to try and combine the two: food festival and an evening of crazy golf. Wow, that's just, that sounds so superb. So is it indoor? Is it like this ghetto golf? With, yes, with, yeah, I think it's oh, like in a, if you in send a me a link, I can stick it in the show notes. So it's like it's indoor, so you can play it kind of even in the winter, and that's just like yeah, yeah. Well, I, th- I think it goes, it's one of these places that I think they've got a bar as well, so they're open to like midnight or one o'clock. But, uh, oh, just, it just sounds like heaven. Yes, yeah. I mean, they've sullied it by putting Sonic in there, but I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine <laughs> apart from that. But surely after EGX, you love Sonic now. <laughs> but definitely silence. <laughs> Son- Sonic is a thing. Sonic is a thing. Sonic, Sonic is definitely a thing. Oh, that just sounds so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's really nice to have something a stone's throw away as well. We've got to get the train in, but uh, yeah, it's nice to see that sort of like a food festival, evening entertainment more than just mm. uh, bars and cinema. Yeah, that's yeah. just so cool as well, having a food festival in the evening. Because obviously, like, it, we, in Tumble Joys, I've mentioned it on the pod before, we have two a year. So we have like a harvest and a spring food festival. And they always kind of end up shutting down at about five o'clock. But it would be really nice just kind of like in the evening, especially the uh, especially the harvest one, which is right at the end of the summer. So you could just like on the pantiles kind of, you could just imagine that. I guess it could carry on because there's lots of bars around there. But it would just be nice just every now and then dipping back and trying something else, like some other foods that are around. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the nice thing. You just rock up after work and uh, mm. then kick back and relax for a bit. Nice, nice. So I have to ask, I have to ask, because obviously you know, we could need to avoid spoilers, but have you seen the Bake Off? Uh, no, no. So oh. um, both Ali and myself got back late uh, from work today. And last right. night we had... Fre- Actually, last night we were supposed to have a Bake Off gathering. Right. But it sort of turned into... A, we invited p- people around for pizzas, because naturally... Um, and we just we just got chatting, and we just sort of started catching up with uh, with friends. And it got to like eight o'clock, and we went, "Oh, we're recording it. You know, we can we can skip past the adverts later." Mm. And then it got to nine o'clock, and said, "Oh, we'll we we'll might watch it in a bit." And then by the time ticked on, it's like, "No, we'll just have to knock this on the head and uh, and play it on catch up." So we've seen the first challenge. We've seen right. the first bready challenge. Right. Um, and we've seen the first part of the technical. Like, and we were desperately trying to squeeze it in before, you know, because we know what a spoiler monger you are. It's uh... yes, I oh, know. There's <laughs> there are certain things. There are certain things. Star Wars, Marvel movies, and the Bake Off that I won't spoil. It's quite the funny whole actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's quite funny. Like yesterday, I was um. So obviously, the Bake Off was yesterday when we were podding, and I and I was in Manchester yesterday, but I left um I left promptly from Manchester so I could get back home in time for that that kind of eight twenty slot so we could start watching the Bake Off and fast forward the adverts and and. And by all accounts, Prue, um, one of the judges on the Bake Off, had had announced the winner on Twitter on social media. So I suddenly, like, kind of, I think it must have been about six, half a six, and suddenly my phone starts like buzzing, and people just telling me to stay away from social media. So I think I sent you a message as well, yep, saying yep. just just stay. Like PSA. I passed, I passed on the goodness. You know, it was like just stay away from. So people were like, you know, we know how important the Bake Off is to you. You know, stay away from, <laughs> stay away from Twitter. So I, it was really hard because I I seemed to have this thing now and and that i keep swiping right it's almost like this kind of like natural instinct on my phone where with an iphone if you swipe right you get the news and and it's just something even when i i'm just not i'm just doing it without even thinking about it and i kept doing it and there was prue's face going no i shouldn't do that and it was almost just like this <laughs> this thing that i kept doing and i kept do- so i just was like right i'll play mario and i played mario on the way all the way home um and i just kind of like stayed away from uh, from social media so which was really good so it was a complete surprise to me but it was a it was a really good final it was a really good i won't obviously we won't kind of talk too many specifics but it was a really good final and and we were both skeptical at the start and it actually turned out to be a really good season a really good series of of the bake-off yeah yeah i think that's i i had full intentions this year of skipping the bake-off like Mm. after what eight or nine years it's like maybe it's run its course i've really appreciated what they've given me so far they've reinvigorated my love of baking 
but is now the time to step away? Because Ali and I are sort of trying to watch less and less TV um, as the years go by. And so like, is this just another thing to, to latch us to this, this big box in the corner when I could be playing Mario? But, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's been, it has been really good. And I think one of the things I've really liked about the Bake Off over the years is that you've seen a lot of other, I, I, you know, put it in that bucket of reality tv shows because it is sort of like you know re- people with real skills at least this way but if you yeah. look at other contestants or other shows like this you, they've seemed to have tried to get more and more gaudy or more and more outlandish and be that just to try and get ratings or the or it's the people coming on it that have turned it that way but apart from occasionally stretching because they baked everything under the sun and so have to go for the the slightly more fancy things nowadays um there's still this just really nice purity about it, and I, th- yes. I think along along the same lines as like the the sewing bee and the the throwdown that has been on in previous years, but both have sadly fell by the wayside. It's just I really like watching people with proper skills mm. making things. And I think this comes down to something I really I really like making things. Mm. Like I think this is why I like Lego. This is why I like painting and things like that. It's it's just an actual. I, I'm nowhere near because of these people, but I just really appreciate that people have these skills and can turn them into real, tangible objects. But the fact yes. it also makes great telly is, is a side product of it all. Absolutely, I, I totally agree. You know, and then and and you're right. I I was worried when they went to Channel Four because I was worried that they might kind of channel for it a little bit with their contestants <laughs> rather than <laughs> rather than what the contestants of the Bake Off should be. And 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 it's really funny because it, you go through that cycle every year with the Bake Off. Is it starts and there's there's 14 strangers and you just don't know who these people are and then yep. by the time you get to like kind of week six or even kind of earlier than that you just suddenly you start rooting for people and you just but you don't really have a favorite you don't go i want this person to win you just enjoy watching as you say what they make and it's just and there's you know nadia who won last year you know she was absolutely fantastic and i she was just I, I've said time and time again that she should be an ambassador for England because she's just such a nice person and she's just yeah. such a great. She's she's just what we should aspire to. She just is this just ball of loveliness and and her TV program was absolutely fantastic where she was going around the UK but cooking and it's just it's really interesting to see how you'll watch these programs and they will they will spur you on they will go right I'm going to make that I need to make that this weekend and I need to do that and that's and that's what I love about the Bake Off. It does go right okay I'm, i want to make something at the weekend and just like you you know it's just it really does give you that 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 just they can do it so can i can do it and it's just it's, yeah. i just love it although the one i'm really disappointed at that i couldn't make and I'm, i might have mentioned this last time was on the stroop waffles yes. the stroop waffles were my favorite thing they're one of my favorite things to eat and just look at the amount of equipment or just fine cutting skills that you need to get these like wafer thin wafer thin waffles that you then have to cut in half to put the tr- um, the uh, the toffee in the center it's like that. yes i'm just gonna lose a finger if i even try this <laughs> i'll just eat them instead <laughs> yes <laughs> it's really interesting actually because like this the the final show i mean i've always kind of said oh i'd love to go on the bake-off it's always been one of those things where i'm like yeah i could do this i could and and, and a lot of the stuff they do i never seem to get phased on like oh that would actually phase me i wouldn't be able to do that i think timing would would be my biggest issue but the the showstopper challenge this for the final I, I i said to nicola that if you know it i wouldn't be able to do that i'm sure we're testing and 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 you know practice and practice and more practice but it was just it was just so intricate it was just so intricate and it was awesome you know it was fantastic but yeah let's let's get away just in case i spoil it and and <laughs> accidentally <laughs> trip out who it was uh, but it was absolutely fantastic and uh, it was a it was a really great final Grand, grand. So, uh, so what have you been up to this week then? Um, I think the biggest thing for me really has been has been I went to see Thor. Um, oh, yes. So went to Thor Ragnarok um, at the cinema. So got my got my usual seat in the IMAX. Um, so <laughs> did they is, reserve it for you now? <laughs> it does. It's got my arm screw on it. It's yes. Yeah, it's like here you go, sir. There, here's your popcorn. Um, but I I have to say that, and I know I say I know I always start every kind of superhero <laughs> movie with that was awesome. <laughs> 
But this one was truly. Was, was this actually awesome? I've been this lying. Was, I've been I, lying all the other times. This one. It's it set a new bar of awesomeness. The the the, the awesomeness bar was raised by Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, if it anyone was, wants to see the definition of hyperbole, just look at Anthony's Twitter feed every time he goes to see a Marvel movie. <laughs> yes, you just kind of see it. Or whenever I start a game that's really kind of really kind of <laughs> grabbing me, I'm like there's about eight tweets or go out. But um, but no, I mean. That's Thor Ragnarok is just it's funny it's a fantastic superhero movie it looks stunning there's some set pieces in it and there's some shots that the the director of photography the DP just set up and it's just amazing you know I just sat there in full IMAX 3D as well which I, I'm still I'm not I wish it would just go away but for this time yeah. it really actually kind of made a difference like we went to see um blade runner 2046 um we went to see blade runner in imax 3d and i didn't need the glasses you know there was nothing 3d about it but thor ragnarok in imax 3d really did give that depth of field and look absolutely fantastic but the the main thing about this movie was it's just so funny it is just hilarious you know this is just a funny movie it's by it's by the guy who created who directed wrote and direct the hunt for the wilder people it's um the what we do in the shadows a bit of flight of the concords you know there's and you can feel all of that in it you know how they how this director landed thor i have no idea and i really want to find out it's kind of one of those i want to see read hear an interview because i really would love to kind of know how how he landed this but it's it's just hilarious it's <laughs> just so first, funny the first couple of thors they weren't comedic i mean they were they were no. funny moments as there are in all the um the marvel movies but they weren't straight out funny films were they they, they tried to no. be quite dark and serious at times absolutely i mean chris hemsworth has amazing comic timing he's just even the very first scene he's just funny you know i started laughing there was only the great thing and i probably shouldn't share it but the great thing about going to imax what i what i do is i drag nicola out of bed and we go for the very first showing at um on a saturday morning and the great thing about that apart from star wars because it's always busy but when you go there's only probably about 20 people in the cinema so it's just lovely you know and i was i did kind of i became very self-aware of how how much i was laughing out loud at a lot of it (laughs) Uh, and I think I think my laughter became a little bit infectious because a couple of other people started laughing as well. But there were some bits where the whole cinema, all twenty people, um, erupted in laughter. But it was just, it's just awesome. And so we came out of of seeing Thor, and there's two after credit scenes as well. Just a quick PSA. Um, we came out seeing that, and we went for some sushi, went for some lunch, and I was trying to convince Nicola to go and see it again. Because we're in Red Blue Water, so we, we did the a little best bit of, Marvel movie ever. Yes. Well, exactly. Yes. I was like, I was like, because she was like, that is absolutely fantastic. And I said to her, I cannot wait. I can't wait, but I also cannot wait for it to come out on Blu-ray. I'm gonna have to, or Apple TV, because I've now ditched media. But you know, I can't. I can't wait for it to roll around to to come out on home release. I need to go and see it again at the cinema because it was just, it was that good. You know, it was that yeah. that fantastic. So, so yeah, I just absolutely loved it. It's just as well, and it's one of those movies where even the day after, I was still chuckling about certain things, and I just kept kind of saying stuff. And Nicola was like, "It's still chuckling. You're still like tickled." by that movie aren't you and I'm like I love it it's just such a great movie so Thor, Thor is still my favourite Avenger as well I think he's got this this nice well especially in the early movies this nice mix of ye olde England and so mm. like you know the clinky of I, I think there's the is the scene in the first one there where they're pretty much just in a long bar and chinking gallons and quaffing pints and stuff like that. I can't <laughs> yes. Yeah I think that that might be two but yeah though I know it, I know the one exactly what you mean and it's yeah. just you know and, then, and there's and then mix that with the, like, the fish out of water where he's bringing these ways into the modern world. So it's always had this like comedic edge to it all. Like He's just not quite clicking with it. There's, it's obviously faded in time as the Avengers have gone on, but I, as much as I might be switching off from a lot of the superhero movies, I am very much looking forward to this. Just I, I think what reinvigorated me was Chris Hemworth in Ghostbusters. I, I, yes. I, that, that movie has got flaws in many places, I think. It's still a good movie, 
But just see him play the fool as Kevin, it just made me just want to see him in other comedic roles going, yes, you have, you have made me titter, and I want to yeah. see you titter more. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Like I say, right at the start, the, the opening kind of shot, it's just it's just funny. You know, it just is just so funny. And it's, it's, a, it's an amazing movie. Jeff Goldblum is fantastic in it, has a, a really good part, and he is Jeff Goldblum, but he's just really funny. <laughs> you know, there's some, there's some great How cameos. How is he, Jeff Goldblum? Ah, he's just go- oh. Yeah, he's just full. He's he is full on Jeff Goldblum. There's some fantastic cameos, and it's just it's just really good. And you know the the character that the director plays, who's a character called Korg, um, who's a you know, CGI character, but he does the voice. He is just hilarious. He is just so funny, and it really does channel a little bit of the Fly of the Concords when you well, just hear him talk. Well, I hear I hear he's based off of um, was it a New Zealand bouncer? Right, okay. So I, I don't know whether it's a New Zealand bouncer he knows, but I, I think I heard one interview where, like, all New Zealand bouncers, according to him, are these really big, you know, like rugby hulking monsters. But yeah. then with really delicate voices. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. You nailed it. Yeah, that's exactly it. So so it was absolutely fantastic. So I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it, even though I do say that to every every movie I've... <laughs> I, I've also I've also booked tickets to see Justice League. You know, another one of your favourites. Uh, you know, the uh. the sequel to Batman versus Superman. Um, so I've booked <laughs> I've booked my tickets to see Justice League again. Same seats, IMAX Saturday morning at Blue Water, and uh, and also obviously you know Star Wars as well. So I've booked tickets to see Star Wars. Nice. So I've got that's November and December. So I've got. I've got so we've we've had we've had Thor. I've got Justice League. I've got Star Wars, and then I go on holiday. So I'm just not quite happy. They can, they can so. replump your cushion. <laughs> yes, exactly. So it's just it's all very good. So yes, <laughs> I can't nice. wait. So yeah, so gaming. We're a gaming podcast. <laughs> what have you been playing, James? Um, so it's it's been a while, but I think most of my last month has still been consumed by Destiny. Right. Um. When did they they release the raid a good two or three weeks back now? Mm. And uh, you and myself were trying to get raid ready, I think, last time we met. And um, I have to say, I actually enjoyed the march towards the raid this time round. Because I remember with Destiny 1, they just got a point where it just got very grindy. Very grindy. And you just had to hope that the dice rolls went your way and the engrams would spill and you'd be able to just eke up a few more levels here and there. And... I think the way they've restructured Destiny 2 has helped really soften that blow. Because mm-hmm. I remember getting to, like, level 20 or, like, armor level 200, or I, I even forget what the actual specific... Is it power? Is it light? I can't remember. I think it's power, isn't is it? Is it power? Yeah, I got We're to about power wrong. 200, and <laughs> yeah. then, like, looked in the distance going, I've got, I need to get another 80. 80, at least, of these things to get raid ready. And there was a point where I was almost ready to throw in the towel, remembering the grinding and the constant having to do the strikes, just to hope you got a random roll. But the way they've structured it now with like the weekly drops that you're guaranteed to get powerful engrams, and the way that you're just enticed into the world to go and do the public events, that made, that made getting raid ready um, far more fun than I thought it was going to be. Because I think I just did each of the strikes probably once or maybe twice just because of the random rotation of it all so i didn't feel like i was just retreading those same maps those same storylines time and time again Mm -hmm. and i think i think having like you guys on and constantly jumping in with my brother and so would just just help get it going so i think i got raid ready within about 30 hours whereas i think last time was like 60 or something like that so Wow. wow yeah yeah um but yeah, so we we did the raid. Um, you, uh, myself, uh, Nicola, Matt, um, who else were there? Our friends, Wee Man and Steve. Yes. Um, so the six of us all teamed up on one Sunday. Um, I was a bit worried at one point whether I'd make it because it was the day after a friend's wedding, but uh, I was sensible. <laughs> I was sensible the night before. Um, so we all rocked up, and there's going to be no... Well, we'll, tr- we'll try and talk around spoilers. We won't try and spoil any of the, the secrets or the puzzles. We'll try and just give you an indication of the structure. Um, yes. But I don't know about you. There was there was something truly wonderful when we started upon that adventure because you just you get dropped down onto a a floating space pyramid is probably mm-hmm. the best thing I can say, and you're just faced with this really awe inspiring sight. Like for for as much as like Destiny One, I think held back on the the colours. It's fair to say that they put all the colours in the first opening rooms of the raid. There's just so much gold and purple and just shining and loveliness to it all. 
It was very majestic as we all kind of. The, I, I totally agree. There was there was this kind of there was a sense of wonder when we first started. It was all like, quick, take a screen grab. Look at yep. us all there. We're all kind of <laughs> we're all standing in the line. Look at us. We're all ready, guardians. Let's do it. You know, even even warlocks. You know, we were like, yeah, let's do this. You know, and then and, and then we, you know, and then we just kind of we we we. I think we were met with a puzzle straight away, which was how do we get into this pyramid? You yeah. know, how do we get yeah. into this golden temple? But it was just. Even that was just fun, and it was just really good laugh. Yeah, I I really enjoyed a lot of the puzzle solving mm. elements because for for those of you who have done the raid, um, we there's the big opening area which we lovingly term the porch because you've got to go through the porch to get into the house, um, and the porch where you just have to try and figure out how to unlock all these doors. That that probably took us a good half an hour to click because I think we mm. were just so distracted by everything, like going, is, is there more to it than we're thinking? Do we just stand here and shoot? Do we go off and... So I think we were overthinking the first uh, section somewhat, but I think like so many elements of the raid, like the, you solve the puzzle and then you have to try and figure out how to execute it. Yes. I love that two-stage process of going, what does this do? Okay, this does this. Oh, that means we can do that. Okay, right. We've solved this. Now, now, now divvy out the battle plans and away we go. Yes, um, and that's sort of like flowed into the first room, which is was the baths for those of you who are experienced, and that took us three hours to get through that room. <laughs> I can't believe that took us three hours. What what I loved about the entire day that when we were playing the raid was the kind of the theme of the raid was just just humour me. And just, just let, just I, I, I think I know. I knew this would come up. <laughs> I think I know how it's to just, just humour me, and it was just. But though the baths, I can't believe that took us three hours to to kind of work oh. that out. But it was, it was we, such good fun. We did it with a, another group last week, and it just happened to be the the random room that we went into first. And mm-hmm. that I think that only took them an hour and a half. Like, right. There was, there was me and uh, and Wee Man who had been on our raid, so we were keeping quiet in the background. But it just it just goes to show that if you don't notice a certain specific thing, you can be spinning in circles. Because hmm. it was all just trial and error throughout the entire thing. Like, going, okay, maybe this is it. Let's have a couple of runs and see what this does. Because there's there's six people in there, and you almost have to try and factor that in. Like, how would they stop people doing this solo? How would they keep everyone engaged? What does it mm-hmm. mean to try and swap responsibilities? And I think that puzzle works great when you have those visual clues that you can just twig on like either there's like glowing platforms or big bads coming at you or maybe just like elements of the environment moving or reacting in certain ways that you just have to capture Hmm. and i think that's awesome but when we got into our second room which was was it the gauntlet yes yeah yes yes it was i I don't know whether it's because we'd already been going by four out for four hours at that point in time but it just didn't feel as intuitive a puzzle Mm. there was something beautiful about the baths where there was such a confined area and reasonable cues you know we were slow in picking that up i'm not gonna lie but there were at least reasonable visual cues to get you going whereas i thought with the next room there was it, it allowed you needed too much of a leap of faith to try and figure out what was going on I think one thing about the baths, before we go into the corner, one thing about the baths is when we finally executed it, so our last attempt, when we actually kind of completed it and got through it, that was just such a fantastic piece oh, of yes. gaming. Yeah. You know, the the fact that we had six people all working in Harmony. gorgeous, gorgeous unison, yeah. and just really, just really clicking, listening to each other, and, and just communicating. I just thought that was just, that was absolutely fantastic. You know, it's kind of, <laughs> I guess, akin to kind of what you're looking at with Sea of Thieves, isn't it? You know, it's it's getting a group of people working together in order to achieve that goal. And, and whenever I play Destiny with, with friends previously th- their kind of goal was almost like they're going to kill more people than i am even though we're trying to do a strike mm. together so w- doing the raid which again you know i've said before on the pod is that this was my very first raid so actually doing that is my first one and also nicola's first one as well and doing that was just it was just great because also the corridor as well or the the porch that was that was again was was kind of okay right you know you and i went off and and grabbed what we need to grab while the rest of the guys were covering the base and when we tried that different different permutations it just wasn't clicking and it was and i just love the fact that this raid really did just promote playing together and i think that's kind of that's why i kind of came away 
you know, we'll get to the gauntlet at the moment. We came, we all kind of came away with like, okay, that was it. But it for me, I came away elated because I just had this this gaming experience that you only see on kind of uh, demo floors on E3 yeah, <laughs> you know, or that, showcases on E3. That sort of sensation so few and far between because you can you can co op a level. You know, you can you can play Halo, you can play various online shooters as a co op experience, hmm. but getting through because yeah because when we played gears of war horde mode we got to level 50 and i don't that was that i think that was an achievement you know that was we'd managed to survive the odds through skill determination or just hiding in a corner <laughs> but this was a proper not only like yes we've done it but yes we've figured it out and then yes we've like pulled together and figured out a system how to do it yes and and there was proper you know if, if it would have been together there would have been high fives and all sorts of hugs i'm sure at that point in time but <laughs> the best we could do was just do silly dances but by god those silly dances were worth it <laughs> and, that was, and that gave us that that really gave us that kind of spur to go into back to the porch because after you do you finish the barbs you then go back into there to open up the next area as well you know we were really on a high after that and it was just even like i say even though we were going for like four and a half hours at that point because we'd solved that puzzle we were just we were Elated. kings yes. we were kings <laughs> <laughs> and then we got to the gauntlet and then i wanted to kill everyone um <laughs> yeah the guy whereas the bards was a bit more combatty hmm. i think this was a bit more i, I don't know wait we could say we we're just really bad in coordination and timings and things but it just didn't feel as nice a puzzle to try and figure out yes and i, and I appreciate the fact that all the all the destiny raids each room has to try and have this unique feel so that it doesn't feel like oh it's another combat puzzle oh it's another combat puzzle it's yeah there was just too many things that were just too much of a leap in my mind at that point mm-hmm. and i i know like we we were stuck on that room for a good three or four hours to the point where before we logged off we just decided like we're gonna we're gonna Google we're gonna swallow our pride we're gonna Google the answer and then try and give it a go and even when we had the answer I I think I, it was probably because we had been playing by it for eight hours at this point in time <laughs> but we just we just couldn't I just, yes. I don't know muster the enthusiasm or muster the energy because I I I think that elation had gone we'd been deflated by the fact that we hadn't figured this bit out ourselves hmm. absolutely and i think there was just even like as you say even when we did have the answer you know thank you Eurogamer. um even when we did have the answer it was still too finicky to execute and it just didn't make sense you know if we had the yeah. answer like right okay we do what it says and that works it that di- that didn't happen so it was still kind of it was an incredibly finicky it, experience after that so did you have that on your second raid did you have that room or did you have somewhere else no so the second raid we had the the bards again just by pure random chance um, mm-hmm. and it, it, it's actually really fun watching someone else solve the same puzzle that you have solved um Admittedly, they did it far better and quicker. But I like to think it's because we're all about 10, 15 levels higher than we were when we did it. You know, it's, it's far, yes. far easier at that point. Um, but again, there was that nice, like, proper, like, high five moment when we finished it. And then we moved on to um, what we would describe as the room with the dogs. Mm. Um, and we, we did this, this run over a few evenings. So we tried to give it two or three attempts or so, but um, we spent two whole evenings on the, on the dog room and wow. didn't manage to do it. The, the difference being with this one, though, is I think um, we actually figured it out. We mm-hmm. figured out the puzzle. And there was, again, this, like, this great sense of, yes, guys, we've got this. We've got this. Mm. Um, and there was this, again, just this real nice sense of camaraderie as we would try something. And it was a very very open and welcoming group where we got to try things like shall we travel this shall we travel this um but again there was just there's just something and I'm, I'm i'm quite happy to admit at some point in time like i'm just not good enough to do some of these things like i'll pull it off i'll fully put it out there that i just need to play better but i occasionally i just look at the puzzles and go you're just a tad off you're just a tad off whereas so with the gauntlet i felt the communication to what the puzzle was was just a slight off Mm. and what irritated me about the room with the dogs was randomness right i i think if you're gonna make these puzzle rooms hard you really want a sense of determinism Mm. so that when you go in just like the baths was fully deterministic as i could tell like you know everything spawned in the same time in the same place in the same rotation 
and that meant we could prepare for it you mm-hmm. know you could people would call for support and you know certain members would ebb and flow between different um, other parties to give help but we knew what was happening and we got to refine our tactics but with the dogs there was just just a touch of randomness to it that meant that every time we came in we were just coping with a dice roll as well as our own inadequacies <laughs> So I th- by the end of it, it's like again, like okay, we've got to take solace in the fact we have figured this out. But this raid, this raid is done for me. Yes, yes. So uh, is that it? Are you going to wait for the next one, or are you going to are you going to give it another try? No, I, th- I think I'm done. I think I'm right. done. Um, and I don't know. If, I wouldn't say done with Destiny completely because if there is another full raid coming out in another DLC, then I might be tempted to come back. You know, assign another Sunday afternoon to it. Let's do another few evenings because. That draw of that, you know that adrenaline rush, that that cooperation, that team spirit, that will always keep me coming back. Mm. But equally, that nagging sense of do I really want to put myself through another four hours is <laughs> on the other shoulder <laughs> to try and balance it. It's like the the feeling that I've got from Destiny Two and from Destiny One's raids is is still some of the best gaming experiences I've ever had because mm. you just there's, there's so few games that actually truly test cooperation to that extent. Um, but I feel that without the target of leveling up, because I think I'm two nine six now as well. But I feel my, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna. Yeah. I think I'm gonna check out. That's yeah. That's really interesting. I mean, one as much as I did enjoy it, and I really enjoyed that kind of. It was really nice just to spend a whole afternoon. You know, Nicola and I had some food before the before the raid. You know, we made dinner and then we just kind of jumped into it, and it was a really lovely afternoon. I was surprised, and we were talking about it a couple of days later. You know, I was surprised at how different it was to destiny you know if you compare the gameplay of of destiny even the strikes even that destiny is very kind of it's very lovely you just go along you do your you do your strikes you do your, your missions you do your patrols you and shoot everything you, in front of you and you pick up the glowing it, things and you move on exactly you know and sometimes there's a little bit of a puzzle that you just need to work out but then suddenly you had this raid and the raid was just completely different it was not what i was expecting but like you say it just really as i said and even as i said you know i just love that co-op element about it and it just really did but yeah i'm i'm i would like to try it again i'm not racing back to it and there is i mean at paris games week um, which we'll get to in a bit they did announce that we've got the curse of osiris um dlc that comes out on the 5th of december so that's obviously that's the co-op kind of campaign that they're kind of bringing out so that's coming out and then um with that i guess will probably be more raids more strikes etc but uh so uh, i mean i'm i'm still happy to just kind of put more time in there's been other things that have kind of taken taken me away from destiny which we'll get to in a moment you know other games and also other tv programs like stranger things and 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 the new series of that and there's so it's almost like i haven't had time for destiny but it's definitely something that i'm not i'm not quite ready to kind of let go yet because i i haven't got to that um, sweet spot either on my kind of light level either so i'm still trying to level up it's it's all right despite your low level you still pulled your weight so we can't yes yes (laughs) But it was just it was such it was such great fun and I just really like you know can't say enough you know it was just such a great moment you know and if you have got that group of people then try and kind of get together you know it took a while for us to kind of to arrange a date but when we did and we all stuck to it and it was just so much fun it was really cool yeah yeah I I, I fully hope that when there is another raid I'd be quite happy even if it comes out December January like if we say you know let's wait till April or something like that let's let's give us a break let's come back to it let's not feel like we have to grind the entire time and yes yeah yes. just visit afresh yes indeed so what else have you been playing well I've, I've been playing the uh the only title that anyone should be playing on the switch Picross <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, yeah, just despite everything else, I I still have. A, I know you you're still playing Stardew Valley, and I am. I've I've got a really poor play. I think I've done like the first ten days in Stardew Valley, but every what? time I sat down with the Switch prior to Mario's launch, it was pretty much going. Oh, but I could just do another couple per cross. <laughs> and especially as Ali and I have been playing this co-op the entire mm. way to to the point where Ali was I, th- I think she was sat doing some cross stitch and I was there just picking up the switch and she glanced over and saw me on Picross and said you're, you're not you're not doing one without me I <laughs> so then we popped it in the dock split the controllers and away we went but wow. yeah it's that's 
I I I still love it. Like mm. as much as it is a very simple Sudoku like game, um, I thoroughly recommend it for like seven ninety nine or whatever it was. I have put about twenty hours into it or something like that. So wow. if someone's looking for a game to chew or through on the, a bus ride, that is definitely the one to go to. Um, but yeah, that has that has been supplanted a little this week with the release of a certain Mario. Um, I'd, I'd, you've got Mario Odyssey as well, haven't you? I have indeed. Yes. yes. I, uh, one of the things that um, one of the things I absolutely loved about uh, the, the probably for one of the first times is Nintendo enabled us to pre-download, to pre-download and pre-install um, ahead of release date. So I bought mine digitally. Uh, thanks to friend of the friend of the show, Matt. Uh, he gave us a great <laughs> tip, which was that Amazon Prime was actually selling um, digital codes for the Switch uh, about ten pounds cheaper than uh, Nintendo eShop. So, yeah. so which was it was like about forty. I think it's like about forty-five pounds, and I'm with yeah. my Prime discount. I managed to get it for like about thirty. I think it was about. It was just. It was incredibly cheap. I think I got it for about thirty-one ninety-nine, and I was wow. just very impressed. Yeah, I think I snapped it up when it was around forty or something. So that yeah. that price sounds like it's fluctuated the entire way towards well, launch. So I also it was also cheaper than when I went to checkout. I also got two pounds off as well. I don't know if that's because I'm a huh. Prime member. So I was like just giving this away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, so so I got that as well. So I'd already bought mine, but then obviously I needed it for Nicholas as well. So I I got kind of a cheap <laughs> cheap version for Nicholas because I just I just feel that we should have on our on our um, the memory cards we should have the Mario Zelda. Um, Mario Kart and Stardew Valley, obviously. Well, you know, you, we should just, just have those. This is just forward thinking, though, because I know of uh, at least one of the couple who might have one of their halves rotating on this pod very soon, um, where this, this basically seems to be a constant battle for Stardew Valley at this <laughs> point in time. And they go, no, 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 no. It's it's slightly excessive to have two switches. But I'm going, is it? Is it? Think how much? Think how many domestics you'll save at this point. Exactly, in time. and all that extra Stardew Valleying that you could be <laughs> that you could be doing. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's just I, I can't believe it because so yes, I've been playing Mario, and we had like was it October twenty seventh was when it when it came out. On oh, that like, day, yeah, last Friday, yes. Yeah, we had Castle Wolfenstein, so we had Wolfenstein two, we had Assassin's Creed, and then there was Mario as well. There was just so many games that were coming out in one day. It's, it's to the point where I, I actually pre-ordered, I, I very rarely pre-order that far in advance, but when I was at E3, they had the Assassin's Creed um, guys next to us, mm. and like for the so for most of the week, I'd just seen this, this Egypt battlegrounds going on and what have you, and it just drew me, I thought, this, this is the time, this is the time I'm going to jump back in. So I pre-ordered it, and then Mario got announced for the same day, and it's, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Assassin's Creed man, whose name <laughs> yeah. I don't know you know. I think actually, I think it's Bayek, which always makes me think of a Yorkshireman. But <laughs> so I'm basically now putting Assassin's Creed to one side for the week until the Xbox One X comes out, and that mm-hmm. that will be my launch day treat for the Xbox One X. So until then, it's Mario, Mario right. all the way. Yes. So so how how far are you in? Are you enjoying it? How's how's the old Mario Odyssey going? I I am enjoying it. I am enjoying. It. So the 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 first um so the first world you get lots of hats the second world there's some dinosaurs third world there's a tree fourth world there's some water and i think i'm oh no there's a mex there's some fake mexicans as well so i think i've gone through the first four or five worlds and it's it's delightful yes like in, in certain respects it's absolutely delightful i still find it very disconcerting to see mario in i wouldn't say photo realistic but in environments where there are proper trees yes it's it's weird. Like I expect the nice bold flat colours that you've seen in 3D Land, and um, almost imagine they'd be like in in Mario Three and what have you. Um, and there are some levels still like that. But yeah, when he's just wandering around a city or wandering around a forest, it does feel like he has been dropped in in a bad Photoshop. But. Um, <laughs> It was really but, bizarre, actually. The first time when you were in the Mexico or the kind of Mexican level, yeah. um, when you were there, and there was in that level, there is a taxi, and there's a guy. There's yeah. a taxi that's just crashed into the sand, and there's a, there's a normal human, and that just felt that felt really weird. The first time I kind of came across yeah. that, and and obviously you go to New Donk City that we've all seen, and when you go there, it's it's even more kind of slightly kind of disconcerting. You're just like this is bizarre, but then you just get into it, and there's such an 
amazing tune in New Dog City that you just enjoy <laughs> the joy of it. I actually, on the way home uh, from Manchester, so I had like about a three and a half hour train journey. I was playing, I was playing Mario, and I got to this bit in um, New Dog City, and I won't spoil it for anyone. But there's Mario starts dancing, and I just sat with my headphones on, listening to this tune, watching Mario dance for for what I could only describe as too long. <laughs> it was just like anyone who was sitting next to me or around me was like, that guy is just he's staring just with a ginormous grin on right? his face. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he's weird. But it was just, oh, God, I love that bit so much. But, but it was be, just so cool. I, I think music is probably one of the things that is the highlight of this thing. And I don't mean that mm. disparagingly. I mean, there's actually a really good soundtrack to this. Like, they've they've just gone to town on really embracing, like, properly funky rhythms yes. like in the forest world um that i'm um uh, keep returning to there's almost like a 70s um cop drama theme tune because <laughs> yes. every every time i hear there's like this this slap bass and the funk guitar just like start kicking up i just keep imagining mario in like a sheepskin coat rolling over a bonnet of a car it's just <laughs> But it's it's just really catchy. Like you wouldn't, you if this was old Mario, you'd expect like the twiddly little sort of like twee tunes. Mm. I think because he's he's in a forest level. But yes. um, yeah, they've just gone to town on all the uh, orchestration, and it's yeah, it's really good, really good. And, and I love when you go when you go into a wall when it turns into a more kind of eight bit um, Mario. The the music changes as well, so you get that kind yeah. of change. And that I love that so much. You know, when I when I first saw that. Uh, that kind of, I wouldn't call it a gimmick, but that kind of gameplay feature, I thought, I'm not going to enjoy that at all when it goes into the war. I know it's similar to, I think, a Zelda game had a, a similar mechanic. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to enjoy that bit. I want to be 3D. I want I want, um, I want, want Mario 64 too. This is what I want. I don't want to. <sighs> but I... Embrace the past. I absolutely love it. You yeah. know, when I get, I'm now looking for those sections now. And there was a level that I'm in. Um, I had, I had this, this... This hate adore um, thing going on on the way home last night on one of the levels. It's called the Lost World. I think it's called the Lost World or Lost Kingdom. And I went in there and I just kept dying and I just kept dying and I couldn't work out what I was supposed to do. So I just kept, I was walking around, I was trying everything, trying to jump and I just couldn't. And it was just, I was like, I hate this game. I hate this game so much. I'm, I just came out of a water world, which was. Which was Dear just God. oh, I just hate. I I, I share it, your your hate yeah. for Waterworld because it's all just the wrong way up, and you have the whole breathing thing. And I all, I always hate in Mario just try and get through them as quickly as possible. And so I just done that, and then I got to this Lost Kingdom, and I just. I just couldn't understand what the world was telling me. It was like, what do you, what do you want me to do? You know, what exactly am I supposed to do? And then suddenly, just, just by accident, I unlocked something, and then it all just started to click, and it clicked so much that it just became I didn't want to leave that world now in Super Mario you have you have to get as many moons as you can in order to get your Odyssey to power up your Odyssey and I just kept which going. Which is a spaceship we should say this is the, yes. the, the Odyssey is a spaceship that gets you between the different lands. Yes so um, and I just I just kept going I just kept finding more moons and playing more uh, doing more of the puzzles and just because I didn't want to leave I just didn't want to leave this world and I just I absolutely loved it it looked incredible and and the, the, suddenly there were these puzzles that were really frustrating me and I was kind of like in my head screaming why can't I do this you know, suddenly it just became this is one of my favourite Mario levels ever you know? it was it's, like, it's like a mini version of the Destiny Raid at this point like what yes. is this puzzle they have set me exactly because all around I could see all the places that I needed to get to but I just I lost so many coins just trying to I'll go I'll try and do a long jump by holding down my ZL and jump I'll see if I can do that and oh I've got there now I try and do it again, and I would die. And I was like, "Why? Why can't I do this?" And then it just all just clicked. So, uh, did you end up using the hat move? Because one of my I, the the hats, like if you discount the fact that you can basically take over other creatures, I mm. do enjoy the hat as this sort of outreach for yes. Mario because you can fling it and it can grab coins, or you can fling it and then use it as a platform to jump and get over even larger gaps, which which I really like. Is like this this is a dynamic addition to your repertoire mm. like forget forget double jump you have to earn the double jump at this point in time because actually quite a lot of the time i've been there jumping in the air and expecting to hit the um 
is it B A? I forget. It's crazy Nintendo and their D pad, uh, their button layouts. Um, whichever the jump button is, I press it and I expect to press it again and get that second momentum. But no, no, you have to throw the hat out, jump on it, and then catapult yourself forward. Which I think is a lovely little skill touch to it all. Yes, the first time I did that, I think that was in that uh, Mexican desert land. The first time I did that, there was there's all these kind of uh, poles, these pillars, and you have to try and jump between them. And that was the first time I did that, and I was like, "This is just incredible!" I, you know, I'm the king of the world now because I could do this <laughs> and I could do it, and I just really enjoyed it. But you know, uh, no, the, I mean the 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 Lost Kingdom that I was in, it had you know something happens I, again. I won't spoil. It's kind of you have to kind of skirt around it, but you just you're just you're you're without your hat for a while. And it and it and I it makes that's you sad. That sounds traumatic. Yeah, exactly. It makes you sad because one of the best things about this game is that you can dress Mario up. And <laughs> I after the amount of pictures that I have so Nicola has it, so she she has it, but she's been playing Stardew Valley. So all I keep all I kept doing coming back from Manchester yesterday was I kept sending Nicola pictures of Mario I had this stripy checked outfit I had a like a Biggles outfit and then I had a, and she was like why is Mario dressed up I'm like well you're gonna have to play the game to find out I was teasing her with this and she was like I don't understand what you're showing me and it was just so I just absolutely love getting purple because so you have to get purple coins and get purple coins there's a shop in every level and then you can just unlock all of these different outfits and and costumes you know i am hoping that maybe there are kind of outfits out you know within the game that that i haven't kind of found haven't kind of come across hopefully a they... green one yes i was i was skirting around that hopefully maybe a green one maybe for matt a purple one you know and then just because <laughs> you know this has to happen there has to be you know kind of callbacks to luigi and waluigi did, did you think it was I, uh, the first time i put a new suit on for mario and i chose the very very funky suit that you first unlock which i yes. really like um i i was very hesitant to do so because they're just it just felt a bit like sacrilege. Hmm. Yes. And I I didn't know whether just I like, am I going to get really disconcerted by Mario running around looking like, you know, a clown or a pilot or just this really bizarre person in a zoot suit. <laughs> um I mean I soon got over that because you get a lot of fun hats. But it does I guess it's the it's it's I guess I have these preconceptions of what Mario should be. Yes. And I think I'm fighting with a lot of them throughout the entirety of Odyssey because I, I I spoke to you the other day on WhatsApp and I I I put forward the suggestion that was roundly booed by everyone else on the group <laughs> that this this isn't the second coming. Like if I think if you read a lot of the press, this seems to be the greatest thing since I spread, and I'm I'm slightly more hesitant on it. Like I still think it's a good game. I hmm. still enjoy playing it, and I still think it is a lot of fun. But it seems like everything is a side mission. Yes. Like, I, if, like the the few worlds that we've been to, like the the initial world where you get to be a T Rex. There's lots of like prehistoric and dinosaur bones and stuff like that. And I thought, dear God, they are just pandering to me at this point. Like, if I'm going to love <laughs> anything, it's going to be this world. Oh, hello. Sorry, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no, no. It's not. It's me. It's me. I know it's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is all my fault. Um, so I really thought when they put a T Rex in there, like this, this is going to be it. This is this is going to be what I want. And I spent a lot of time in that first world just trying to get acclimatized, I mm. guess, because I wanted more Mario. I wanted more platforming, and I still want more platforming because one of the greatest Mario games in my mind of recent times, in fact, of all times is the 3D Land. I think it was 3D Land on the 3DS. And for me, that was just... That that took on the, the, a lot of the spirit of Mario 64 and gave you a really good mix of just challenging platform levels. And I know Mario 64 had things where you, like, chased penguins and, you know, returned things to their mothers and stuff like that. But it had such a lot of pure platforming in my mind or, or just boss battles. Yes. And I... There's part of me that just... Odyssey has moved too far away from what i want from a mario and, I, and obviously everyone else is really happy with it so this is this is i've got to deal with i've got to live with myself this is my problem i understand this but i haven't done enough platforming i mm. want to use that hat more i want to jump over more bridges i want to have tricky platforming sections and 
I sound really ungrateful because every world is is packed with beautiful little distractions. Like you can't walk more than like twenty meters without seeing the potential for another blue moon or seeing mm. for the potential for another little side quest or another as you say like you can turn into 8-bit mario on the side of some walls and that's again that's that's really nice but it just seems like everything is bitty everything there's lots of distractions as if they're trying to distract you from the fact we haven't really given you a mario game we've given you an open <laughs> world game but please don't hurt us oh look it's good and shiny here's some retro stuff <laughs> yeah. we'll make the music sound like retro too but uh, i can see what you i can i absolutely kind of uh get where, where you're coming from there but i just i think my problem is is, is I, it may just be because I've, I've been desperate for a mario game since since mario 64 because i just don't think there's been a decent mario game since then you know i don't like sunshine and i don't think anyone does uh apart from steve um i don't like sunshine <laughs> and, you know, i'm in I, his uh, camp i am I, not yeah. letting this man go undefended <laughs> it's sunshine ter- is you know, better than you think Gal- galaxy galaxy was too twiddly I didn't like the twi- I mean are you playing with with Odyssey are you playing with a pro controller or are you twiddling are you kind of I, got joy con separate because it no, definitely I, tries to make you do that doesn't oh it oh dear god yes like every yeah. time you boot it up it says hey do you want to try something and then yeah. it seems to sit on an inordinate amount of time telling you to play with motion controls now I'm, I'm playing with a pro controller or um, you know on, on, on handheld mode so I'm static, shall mm. we say? Yes. Um, but I don't think it does that much too, because the, 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 with the controls, you get to throw your hat in various ways, shape, or form. But even with the pro controller, you can like tap it to the side and flick your hat and stuff like that. But yeah, right. I don't, I don't think you need the motion controls, and I don't know whether this is a nod to what they think worked well last time, but mm. it's. It's not needed. It really isn't needed, as far as I'm concerned. No, no. I mean, like I say, I've I've been playing a lot of a lot of mine has been in that handheld mode, and it's quite hard to kind of do any kind of waggle or tilt or anything like that. And I, and apart from maybe occasionally where there there could be a whole bunch of coins that I could do with maybe circling the hat, um, or or a whole load of uh, mushrooms that I could do with just taking out. But apart from that, you know, I've been I've been absolutely fine without kind of a a, a slight hint of a waggle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. so I, I've been I've been more than happy. Because they've got they've got a weird co op mode as well, which I I looked into, but I can't see how it's going to work as well. Because you one person is Mario and the other person's the Hat. <laughs> now that seems quite integral. That's like yes. saying one of you's got movement, the other one's got jump. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. It's I don't think you can separate the two truly, and yet somehow, yeah. Yes. That just sounds like it's almost for someone who's just sitting there kind of watching, you know, imagine they're kind of a father and son, and the son kind of, you know, maybe a young child that yeah. hasn't quite, you know, almost like the, the mode that you get on Xbox, which is that kind of guiding mode where it's like, yeah, you really are controlling this, so you know, just hold this controller and I'm going to do most of it. But yeah, that sounds that sounds bizarre. It doesn't, definitely doesn't sound something like, like the you and Ali could kind of jump into. No, not, not it, at all. There would be it, arguments by the end of it. Yes, so. overcooked style arguments yeah. happening straight away. But though, I mean, I, like I say, I think that there is some platforming in, in the Lost Kingdom. There's some great platforming, and that was one of the reasons why I absolutely love this this level. So I can see exactly what you mean. And and when you get to New Donk City, um, which I never want to leave because it's just awesome. But when you get to New <laughs> Donk City, um, that alone, you know, there's some there's some great platforming there. And and for me, you know, the the best thing about um, the best thing about kind of New Donk City is there's water towers. So I'm playing a Mario game with water towers. I took a picture of it and I sent it to Nicola. I was like like game of the year because it was me standing next to a water tower because i have this i have this weird <laughs> you obsession tower <laughs> fetish that is yeah, yeah. i, I think, do maybe we've never discussed a game with water towers in them before i know, I know. and then, i think i have i think i did open up to darren once on the podcast uh, that i have this thing for water towers and that was one of the reasons why i can't i'm really looking forward to spider-man but when, whenever we go <laughs> whenever we go to uh, whenever we go to uh, new york i i, I t- end up taking lots of pictures my backdrop right now on my imac is this very silhouetted sun setting um water tower shot that i took when i was in new york and i, I take lots of photos like literally if, if it was back in the day when you would get them developed it would be water tower water tower water tower picture of nicola water tower food water because <laughs> i just i'm obsessed with these these water towers i love them i just think they're absolutely iconic and can, amazing can you turn it can you turn into a water tower oh that would be so good i would just stop at that point that would be it I'd be like, you just, probably this would game. if you're a water tower yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you would just be able to move but but i just you know new dog city has a bit of that and it has quite a quite a bit of uh quite a bit of uh 
platforming in in um in in the city okay. so okay. so it'd be quite interesting to maybe okay. see kind I, of I, what I you feel next forward. time yes yeah. yes because we've still we've still got four puzzles left on picross out of like right. 180 so once they're done once wow. they're done they're full full time um but what's what's the what's your favorite thing to turn into so far in uh odyssey um, I, I, I just there's so many. I kind of, I really the <laughs> the snake in Lost Kingdom, the the worms oh, okay. in Lost yes. Kingdom. Yeah. They, um, uh, they are they they were they were one of my favourites. Or also kind of turning into the the bomb buddies, you know, the bomb bombs. Turning yeah. into those was 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 great fun. What about you? Um, I've I've really enjoyed the ones that have changed up how you get around or how mm. you think about navigating some of the world. So on the um. The Forest Kingdom, I can't remember the exact name. There's this almost onion-type creature that sort of waddles at you in a pot. Mm. And then you can throw your hat on them. And each of each, the, the things that you can turn into have different controls. And so all this guy's got is waddle forward and then grow. So rather than jumping, his his little legs just extend up a massive yes. amount of way. And yes. then when you let go, however tall you are, like you'll forward flip. So it's their version of a jump that you have to then go up and then forward flip. So I've really enjoyed some of the the puzzles that has involved them about yes. sort of either trying to get to different areas or how to just navigate across certain mazes or little enemy waves or so. So I, I, those are the ones that I'm enjoying most. Hmm. Uh, that point. Oh, and also Lakitu. Um, you know the 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 turtle in the cloud that floats at the start of Mario Kart. Yes. Yes. He. He is my third favorite Nintendo character of all time. Um, and so the fact that you get to become him and go fishing made me full of joy and happiness. That's so cool. So who's two, Who's your second favorite? Kirby. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, gosh, I should have got that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, Kirby, Lakitu. No, that's it. So that game with those three would just be, that's your ultimate game. Oh, yes. Oh, my words. If I get a green suit later on, we're, we're rocking. <laughs> it becomes game of the year at that point. <laughs> but no, I, I know exactly what you mean about those little onion guys with legs, because there is the whole platform where you have to grow underneath a platform to almost push the platform up. And yeah, I really, yeah. yes, yes, I really enjoyed that. I thought they were really cool. The tanks are quite fun as well. Um, kind of turning into a tank is, is good fun as well. I don't know if you've got that far yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll nod along in appreciation. They, did, they didn't quite click for me, but I know yes. I know what you mean. It's, again, a nice little twist on what they what you usually do. I was, I was very disappointed with the T-Rex, though. Yes, I, th- I right. think this is this is I, I think symptomatic of any game where you control a large creature. Hmm. Um, it just didn't feel very good. It right, just, it lumbered and turned around, and yeah, happened, but broke a wall and that was it yeah i then left him sleeping after that i was that disappointed but yes it, it was very bizarre because it was like when you start the game it's like here's this you here's your hat here's that t-rex we showed you it's almost like yeah. right at the start it's like <laughs> here's all these things and then you're like what have you got left you've shown me your head but there is just so much you know yes, like so someone say, told me there's like 900 moons yes yes i haven't told nicola that yet because she, that, that's she's, kind she's of, gonna get them all yeah. <laughs> I, I think i think that's her kind of uh, like i say we've got like a lot of plane journey so i think she's just I think she might be saving that for that. I think she's kind uh, of like, so I'm going to play it on the plane. Yeah. No, it's, it's, despite all my misgivings, it is, it's enjoyable. I'm enjoying it. It's, it's, I think it's just after the expectations of things like Zelda, mm. I was, I think I was expecting more from it. So maybe it's just my, a mix between lofty expectations and just, misguided in what i wanted from it like i might I, I might just fire up the 3ds 3d land and get back to some hardcore stuff but yes yeah. yes kind of jump every now and then just have a palette cleanse with some with a 3d land puzzle yes yeah <laughs> superb yeah. so, so yes, no, i so i just thought you know like i say i i cannot wait to just kind of continue just to kind of jump into it i'm just like i say there's 900 moons so I, i'd be interested to see what the how many levels there are and what that end game looks like as well you know once you've kind of beaten it it, it just i guess it is just going around getting those moons and solving all those little puzzles yeah yeah and i, I that is usually enough for me because i think whereas the end game for zelda was you know the the, uh, the shrines yeah do I, I was happy to go around and try and mop those up because there were actual activities in them hmm and it does strike me like Mario is that if if there are that many moons, then it does seem like it might be the type of game that you can just jump into a world for 15 minutes, try and hunt down one or two and, and just move on. Happy. Yeah. yeah. Quick plane, quick train journey and just kind of like just yeah. have a quick go. So, yeah. 
Speaking of something I can I can play for fifteen minutes, Stardew Valley, but it's oh. not fifteen minutes. It's my life. <laughs> it's just, I, you know, I I knew that I knew that I would be addicted to Stardew Valley just because of I just enjoy that the mechanic of this game and it, and I held back when it was on Xbox. I just held back, held back because I thought I want to play this on the Switch. This is a Switch game. Yeah, this is a Switch game, and oh, this is such a Switch game. It is absolutely fantastic. Both Nicola and I, we are. She is just so much better at it than I. I am you know she she's already she she has she has bunnies she has bunnies oh. she has ducks she has cows you know she's she, uh, hers her farm is is a hub of commerce you know she it is she's <laughs> she's just brewing things and she's she's redone the entire farm and it looks incredible it looks really impressive and it's growing um but for me i'm i've got you know i've got preserves i've got preserves kind of preserving i've got beer brewing i'm got growing beer hops yeah i've got beer bearing i've got hops hopping I have this. I have. I've. I've started to work out all of my um, where all of my fields should be and what I should be planting and 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 it's really. I now figured out what seasons best to kind of go to the mine and when it's you know when it rains that's it you know you're off to the mine because you don't have to worry about uh, watering any of your plants. I'm trying to find someone to marry me at the moment, but the only person. <laughs> The only person who's who's remotely interested is the is the uh, homeless guy who I keep giving wine to. He seems to be he's quite happy. So okay. he's he's so sad. There's a, there's this character in this game called Linus, and 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 you just you'll be at night and you'll just be coming back from the mine and it will be at night time and you just see him standing there, and so. I just feel really bad, so I always have like wine or jam or honey or, mayon- or, or mayonnaise to give to him because he's just like you can only give him one gift a day. But I just every time I go past, I go, "There you go, have this," because you make me feel sad. So I just like and I just give it to him, and he's just like he's always very appreciative. And yeah. and he actually gifted me some fish the other day as well. So it's oh, you know it, the, nice. the relationship works both ways. It's because I've only played it I think for about ten in-game days before Picross took over. Um, but I, I, yeah, I think one of the last like cutscenes, if you want to call it that, that I saw was yeah him digging through the bins. Mm. Was, that was it, yeah, it's sort of like I, this is quite uh, an interesting game in the sense that it's going to try and put characters like that in there to make sure that you realise it's not all happy go lucky in the in Stardew Valley itself. No, absolutely. And though you know, we had this dance. There was a summer dance, and no one wanted to dance with him because he's homeless, and he just was at the back. And I just was like, I'll just stand here next to you for a while, you know. And it was just, I absolutely love this game so much. It really has. It's. It just has that kind of hooking me where you, you wake up in the morning, you do your, you, you know, go and get the eggs from the chickens and the ducks, you make mayonnaise, you just have this cycle that, and then you just slowly chip away at the exploration. There, in the middle of Stardew Valley, there is a community center and you start unlocking things by, working out the bundles so there's a spring bundle there's a seasonal bundles um, as well as there's a foraging a fish bundle and then by satisfying the criteria that's there then opens up something else like I've just opened up a, a quarry a bridge has been repaired and I can now go to a quarry and it's just having those and also the objectives um, from the other Stardew Valley um, villagers that is just really just keeps me spurring on like someone said right I, I would like a pale ale i'm like i'm gonna sort that for you so i'm growing my hops like <laughs> that's a I- quest i can get behind <laughs> exactly i'm gonna drink a lot of pale ale whilst i do this and you know then i have to build my keg but just building my keg took a while and then and then you brew this pale ale and then you just try and find the villager and it's just it's so much fun and, and, and the great thing about nicola being leaps and bounds ahead of me is that um i can kind of she kind of go oh by the way if you get um uh, what were they? They're they're a berry that grows in the summer. Um, she'll kick me for this, but there's a berry that grows in the summer that if you get that and then make jam or make wine out of it, that's you get a lot of money for nothing. So it's just so it's all those kind of little hints and tips that she's been giving me, and it's just it's I say it. It really it really just pang pang back and harp back to the days of of like Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise, where you know Nicola's Nicola's worlds always look better than mine and it was all more more functional but I just kind of got by and it's just like that again it really just it, it reminds us back to that day that when we were that that kind of time when we were playing that and how how crazy it was and that's kind of all that you kind of talk about like Nicola will go to bed and she'll take a switch with her and then maybe kind of an hour and a half later you have to almost prize it out of her hands or it runs out 
we've actually got three charging stations now around the house for the, for, for the switch for the switch yeah there's one in the bedroom <laughs> there's one in the living room and there's a spare one for the pro controller as well because she's been docking it onto the big tv and it's just it's it's incredible it's just really funny but it's nice. such a great game yeah it's 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 one of these that i'm i i've i've bought i own i but i need to jump back into i think in a time when i have that headspace mm. uh, i think this is gonna be like a post christmas game for me like if i've got a few days off just sit down or if you know just if i go away for a while I'll take it on the plane flight or something and i think i need that to to kick start that addiction because it, mm. do, it does look like it fills that vp or like an animal crossing yes type gap in my life at this point in time where you can just I almost want to get down to that routine where I could just come back, like maybe maybe just hold it to one one in game day a day or something mm. like that, and just just keep the momentum going with it all. But yeah, I've, from all accounts and from like the little WhatsApp group that we've got going, just just the random things I have no idea what you're talking about floating <laughs> past. How how people are like growing magic eggs or collecting bunnies and things like that. It just it seems to have a lot of depth, and I'm always impressed with this game because I think it was just made by one possibly two people or what have you this is wow. this is an absolute labor of love as well so it's i'm impressed on both counts yeah no it's it's absolutely fantastic like i say it's available on switch playstation 4 pc xbox but Ev- it, everything everything but it really comes to life i think on the switch and like you say i'm i'm there now with mario odyssey being out and us being in the silly season uh, of games i am just playing one game day a day now so this morning kind of before i started work i just had that one game day just to kind of have a just so i knew that i did because that's the great thing about it you play through you know when you when you go to bed that's it that's the end of the day and it will save so it really does give you that nice conclusion you've you've put everything in your box the the mayor has taken it away you've got some money you feel like you've actually achieved something there so you can then just go right i'm going to put it away now and i'm going to go and do my proper job uh rather than sitting here playing this or i could plant the parsnips yes exactly oh Let's god it, the parsnips. it's it's the parsnips it's the pumpkins in autumn or fall in stardew valley i just had fields fields of pumpkins and it was just <laughs> so much fun it was just it was really cool it was really cool so yes uh, so stardew nice. valley i i highly recommend it so it's just i mean i did i did jump into i won't really talk about it too much today but because i want to play more but i jumped into <laughs> wolfenstein 2 on sunday and and it was too much it was too much the start of wolfenstein is very it's it's very hard hitting it's a game that i want to play i'm very much in like want to play i'm kind of waiting i think for the x to come out next week because it's it it will look better on there it looks a little bit fuzzy uh on the on the on the current xbox one s but i it was so oh, it was just a complete polar opposite to mario odyssey in stardew valley you know you just have you have nazis you have just gore and uh, just i was playing it i played it for about two hours on sunday morning and i was just like no i i'm not ready for this i'm t- i'm in i'm in too much of a happy space with all my gaming to to play this so <laughs> I, I will park this for a I moment need to be in a darker place exactly this. exactly i was like no this is not what i want for my sunday so i i i played the opening couple of hours enjoyed that and and kind of enjoyed it in quotes um and and i'm interested and intrigued and i will play it some more but uh it, it wasn't for me right now so yeah. I just, I'll, sounds I'll like go assassin's back. creed and wolfenstein updates to come on a later podcast exactly exactly so yes so uh, let's jump into the news and in this week's news section we have the free games uh for november also we'll kind of a quick run through the playstation conference and also housemark are, are stepping away from arcade games but the first piece of news is the paris games week so James, did you did you manage to watch any of the um, pre or or get of press conference Sony press conference? No, no, I was out and about when the actual conference hit, so I missed it. But I tried to catch up with uh, snippets here and there, and the main thing that sort of hit my my feeds, Twitter and um, RSS and everything like that was. Ju- I th- I guess the controversy, if you want to call it, of just how dark Sony went. Mm. Throughout mm. some of the the press conference, we'll we'll definitely get on to talking about the the games because there were a few games that caught my caught my fancy throughout the the announcements there. But um, I yeah, the first things I ended up watching after I came back were the um, Last of Us trailers and the Detroit trailers. Wow! <laughs> and 
<laughs> you you talk about being bummed out by Wolfenstein. It's just <laughs> there's so for anyone who hasn't seen it, the the Detroit trailer, which is the um, oh what's what's he called the the French guy the Dave, French guy David Cage Dave Dave, Cage David Cage I think yeah, he's French yeah anyway. David Cage um, yes yeah he's David he's done Cage Fahrenheit <laughs> and he's yes. done um, Heavy Rain Heavy Rain that was the one and so these these narrative. Um, adventures where you get to to alter the course of the flow where you get to see different sides of the story and detroit is taking on this again in in probably a far more interactive way like i think before with heavy rain you could go around like be a bit of a detective or occasionally you know you press buttons at the right time with detroit you get to see a scene and you get to try and make it happen in a different fashion or you 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 get to choose multiple options as you go through it it seems far more of a reactive type thing i i, I don't want to say quite like um uh oh my word get what what's the what's the game that we really like with the rewinding time life is strange uh, life is I strange i do apologize <laughs> i do apologize um in, in that sort of like Life is Strange, you get to see something happen and you get to maybe go back and change it all. But you get lots of little butterfly effects. And I think Detroit apparently is sort of like edging more in that way. And all these trailers mm-hmm. so far allows you to see how you can uh, stop riots as the police, as, as like these sort of uh, robot incarnate people. You get to, you know, maybe play Peacekeeper. And it's it's it seems like a lot of ebb and flow between peace and carnage there doesn't seem to be any in between at this point in time they, they're all or nothing in all their trailers and no more so than in their latest one which shows some really dark domestic violence mm. and i don't often say this but for these two trailers for this and the last of us please make sure that you are of strong constitution before watching these because it is pretty pretty dark where it goes to in detroit and then it pops up at the end maybe it could have been different yes. and i so david cage has been interviewed today and i think he has come out and said like would you would you put criticisms like this towards a filmmaker hmm. and but you know he, he has a certain point i think of it all but gaming is such an interactive experience I, I occasionally think that you have to watch the boundaries slightly more because you are in the heart of it more so than just passively watching a film. Yes, you can get caught up in the film. You know, we, we know how much you love your, your Marvel. They're you know, awesome. you get caught up in the third. But, <laughs> but something as dark as this, I think, often needs to be handled with care. Yeah. And in such a short trailer, it is very hard to judge how much care is taken with this because there are some really dark consequences. I can't overstress this enough. But more so than anything, I just left going. I don't want to play this. Like this, this is not. Um, this is not like a murder mystery. This is mm. not where you have to try and solve a crime after the fact. You are there, effectively tasked with stopping a crime as it happens. A dark, domestic, violent crime. And this, th- th- this does not tick a box of. Uh, this is how I want to spend my spare time. And I just, I was left slightly stunned. And then followed up with the Last of Us trailer, which within the opening like twenty seconds showed, and I'm I'm told this is the first five minutes of the game, if I'm to believe all the press as well. Right, right. You see someone get their arms broken with a hammer. Hmm. Like I, there might be backstory, there might be context, but dear God, it's I just left going. I don't want like so. so someone had to pretty much. I think you in the end like sent me a link for Concrete Genie. Yes, which is a beautiful, like, um, colourful, um, really like, like artistic game. I was ready just to not watch anything else at that conference at that point in time because I was pretty much just like, you know, f- just sod this, sod this for a game of cricket. This is not <laughs> what I want from my hobby at this point in time. Yeah, I want things to be tackled. Yeah, I want games with meaning and message, but one is just brutal for the sake of impact. I think trying to get a rise out of people in the shape of The Last of Us, and the other one just I. I just don't know whether it it can handle the subject matter with as much care as it should. Hmm. Anyway, diatribe over. But yeah, no, I I totally agree. You know, the I, I I watched the conference. I watched the conference live, and and those two trailers that you you picked out there, they were both really kind of tough moments to watch. You know, when you are you, you knew straight away it was the last of us. You're like, oh, this is the last one. This is good, and then suddenly it 
So I'm quite excited about Last of Us 2 because I, I really enjoyed the, the first game. But then suddenly I saw that and it really did it really did affect you. And and if you have a... I totally agree with what you say as well. If you have a controller in your hand, that just brings that... It makes it just a little bit more kind of... To, mm. to use that kind of phrase, that visceral. It just makes it just kind of a little bit more. And you just... And it, it just... It felt uncomfortable. That's not something that I could go, Here, Nicola, Nicola, you got to come and see this. Look at this. I want to play this game. And you're right, you know. I've I've never played a I've never played a David um, Cage game I've never played um, Heavy Rain or those but and I love Telltale games but even you know even Telltale have kind of come a bit close to the mark with Walking Dead but this just seems like it just overstretches that and if you're sitting down and you want to play a game that's not a game that I want to play <laughs> you know that really isn't but you know there was as I said to you there, there was some fantastic stuff there in, in that conference and you know sony really did come out kind of full guns blazing with this they 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 touted it as the e3 part two um i think they delivered the one thing that was a little bit um was a little bit kind of frustrating from my point of view is that it was all they didn't give you any release dates there was no release dates at all it was all 2018 and you know i think it's all ballparks yeah it was i think loco roco loco roco 2 which is in 4k on playstation pro we got a kind of 9th of december but everything else there were some standout games like hong kong massacre which looked like a john woo movie but from almost a top down uh Mm. view that that was just 2018 most of the games I, i think i'm just looking through my notes here it was just all kind of 2018 guacamelee 2 is soon ish i think they put at the end of their trailer which was like it's coming soon and then they kind of put the word ish in after that but this is i do you do have to tip your hat for them because it is usually just the summer that is the Mm. uh the the occasion to announce games as everything runs up to christmas but you do have to tip your hat to them because what there's like 20 odd updates were announced which i don't you know you shouldn't poo poo because these are like significant dlc packs or you know refreshes for the pro or proper content updates um and like probably like was it like five or six new full-blown games or so there was there was five or six full-blown games and there was 10 playstation vr games that were announced during this (laughs) too little too late sony (laughs) well 10 games that i still was like yeah i want to play moss and uh, but the rest were a little bit kind of but but there was 10 new games and they really did just it was like here's new game after new game you know we had hong kong massacre we had guacamole 2 we had gardens between which almost looked like a brother's tale of two sons kind of game and that looked quite that looked quite special it definitely kind of piqued my interest when i was yeah. uh um you know we had um then there was a whole bunch of psvr games such as moss which is that that gorgeous game with the, the mouse with, one? with a mouse yeah it looks a little yeah. bit like mouse guard and you yes, seem to just yeah. be manipulating the the environments in order for the mouse to just traverse the 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 puzzles that are there so you're pulling out bits of stone and you're helping the mouse i don't know if you control the mouse but then you're just kind of helping that mouse uh, kind of move around and, and that is just that looks like a gorgeous game and worthwhile kind of holding on to my psvr just to kind of have a have a play um they had one game that made me laugh so much it was a game called league of war now league of war was this it was this tabletop um game and then so the the trailer that was just hilarious the trailer had this one guy so there was a guy and a girl sitting on a sofa and the guy they were playing and he hands her the controller and then he puts on playstation vr so he's getting this full immersive experience she's playing on the screen and 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 then he's and then they're just they were just she was way too excited for this game because it doesn't look that exciting (laughs) and it was just so funny just to say you know we are still in kind of 1995 when it comes to kind of what a game is and how we should promote these games it just looked it looked absolutely bonkers and the trailer was just incredible i'll I'll stick it in the show notes i love the league of war name as well yes it's it's verging on just just randomized game names of what's popular right now yeah, but, uh, exactly but it was just it was almost like a it was, it was a bit like a kind of almost an american football with tanks <laughs> you know that's kind of what i got out of it okay. but I was, I was it's a good sales busy. pitch in fact. yeah exactly i was too busy kind of looking at this guy who was obviously incredibly selfish putting on the playstation vr why he's i could only expect it was his friend because she was way out of his league um <laughs> <you know. laughs> that was it was just very excited and she was just humoring him but she wanted she had one eye on the door and she was going to go at any point but there was you know there were some really good vr kind of games in it that kind of really did uh the peak 
uh, like I say, um, we had Ultra Wings, which was a kind of almost a pilot wings, but in VR, which looked really good. Cool. Um, there was there was a game called uh, Aura, which where you play this in uh, almost like a Japanese um, dragon, a bit like in Color the Dragons that you saw in Zelda, um, and that looked fantastic. That's out now. That came out. That was one of their and it's available today um, announcements. So that was really cool. Um, so there was some, there was some really good and these all of this I'm talking about here was all in the post show. Was on the pre show. Sorry, not the post show. It was in the pre show. So nice. they had they had some of the guys from. Uh, they had Sid Schumann from the PlayStation podcast who was just basically hosting this and they were just showing here's another trailer here's another trailer you know and they were just showing all of these games and I just thought this your show hasn't even started yet and you've kind of almost got you've got VR out the way um, and you've got some of these indie titles and the one thing I did take from this showcase was that they did they did show everything because Sony at E3 they were criticised that they they didn't have enough indies. So they've they've spent a good chunk of time, a good hour, saying here's all of our indies, here's all of our you know here's the, you love indie titles, here you go, you know here's the indie titles, here's PlayStation VR, and then you know and then they kicked off the showcase. Yeah, I guess that's the advantages of having. Uh... A couple of uh, of big events to be able to to talk to talk at uh, with all these things because they get to respond directly to the the criticisms I guess that came prior because um, I don't think they ignored PSVR during E3 but it was definitely thin on the ground but yeah the indies seem to be dropping off wildly so I guess especially with Nintendo's push in the in the last year as well with the with the announcement of the Switch ever since that came out they've they've been backing and you know, they've they, the Nindies at EGX were just they were loads of them weren't they were, yeah. to actually have their own dedicated Nindies stand was impressive um, but it's it's Guacamole, Guacamole 2 that yeah. is the, the standout for me I absolutely adore Guacamole because I think they got this really nice mix of like it was you know it was a Metroidvania style game but they did something that I always really appreciate in, in in any sort of title, be it 3D or 2D, was they absolutely nailed movement. Mm. They actually made moving around the levels fun. And the fact that you could combine these these wrestling moves into, you know, double jumps and dashes and an extra jump height and, and, and all sorts of things. They they actually wove it into the into the fabric of the game that it could be a it could be an attack or it could be a movement. So it made Huge platforming sections, just really joyous to get around. Just going across one screen could be a puzzle. Hmm. But more than that, it was it was only about four or five hours long, and it was just like this perfect length where you regularly got updates, you reg- sorry, um, upgrades to your powers, but then it also didn't outstay its welcome. Like It hmm. never tried to just rinse itself too thin that you just got bored of it. They actually just gave you the right amount and the right quality level and then let you get out of dodge. It was superb. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I think it came out. Did it come out on Vita first? I think it did. Yeah. Then I got it on Xbox as well. After that, just because it was, I enjoyed it so much. You know, platforms and handhelds, which is you know why mm. I think the Switch works so well for for certain aspects like that. Wonderful. But then yeah. just seeing it in all its glorious color on the on the large screen as well, just it, it was a happy to for mm. me to jump back in. No, it's absolutely fantastic. So they so they kicked off the show. They had Splunky two. So they kicked off the show and they announced Splunky two. For, uh, I don't know if that's a PlayStation exclusive, but it's uh, it's definitely coming to PS4. I, I wouldn't be surprised if everything on here was at least a, a window excuse, <laughs> uh, exclusive. Yes. And then after that, they had uh, Ghost of Shishima, um, which is a brand new game from Sucker Punch. Is, it, is this a samurai one that I've been heard? It is. About? It is. I thought it was uh, like Omni Musha or something like that. I thought, oh, okay, you know, they're showing this, and then it turned out to be a Sucker Punch game. So I was like, ooh. Hmm. So it's because obviously Sucker Punch they did um, they did Infamous so they've done the uh, Infamous yes. game so that I, I I do enjoy the Infamous especially the the later ones uh, I quite like the Infamous game so it's quite nice to see them doing something different. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what sort of carries over from the Infamous as well. Mm. Whether they sort of carry on that is it going to be the same sort of like strange powers? Is it going to be like the the navigating around the large city or so? Obviously in a different context in a different uh, country, but. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how much there uh, is is reused at that point. Yes, indeed. So then after that was that one that I I kind of uh, sent you the the uh, information about the concrete genie, and I just thought concrete genie just looked 
gorgeous. It looked fantastic. The the whole aesthetics. You play this boy. He has a rather large paintbrush. He was being bullied. He was being bullied by this whole kind of bunch of bully. And then he just starts painting these kind of big creatures on the wall. It was almost like kind of monster me game, and it was just the big yeah. creatures on the wall. And then they just started interacting with them, whether he was playing basketball or he was doing other stuff. And it and it just it, they didn't show too much of the game, but it just instantly was. Yep, yeah, that's on my list of yeah. I need to play this game. <laughs> it, it it had it had hints of I guess how Little Big Planet worked mm. as well, where you could effectively, you know, I use paintbrush in the in the in a wider selection, but you have a paintbrush that will then paint a series of things because he had a paintbrush that would paint grass onto a background, or he had mm. a paintbrush that would then extend a tree out in in very bespoke directions. So you could see on the trailer itself that there were very bespoke, very intricate um, backgrounds that they mm. could be created. And I'm very intrigued to find out how that translates into the hands of an idiot like myself. <laughs> like, do, I, do I need full artistic training to be able to get this to work? Um, but then the fact you could extend that out to the monsters, so it wasn't just you know a tree brush. Mm. You could elongate a, a monster's body, then paint a huge head and add horns onto it, or, or you know, teeth and what have you, and it would just animate along. So it looks like there's some quite funky tech going mm. on behind the scenes to make all of these not just easy to make, but also to then interact with you and the world around it as well. Yes. But I, I, I want to know what the actual game is. Yes. Because it looks glorious. Like, the tech in it looks fabulous, and I really want to just play with it. Mm. But I just want to know what the game is, because there were hints at monsters opening up gates or flicking switches if you could, like, create a fire monster or, you know, something like that. But I, I want to know why why are there people bullying you? Are we just supposed to feel sympathetic about it and that's the motivation for him to be alone in this city? Or is there is there more to it than that? Because that wasn't really explained or examined in the trailer. It, no. I guess the, everyone has, has a motivation, but mm. is this shoehorned in? Is this, is this intrinsic? So, yeah, I, I want to see more. Yes, indeed, and, and you know, and speaking of seeing more, I think because obviously we have at the sixth of December or around the start of December, we have the PlayStation Experience. So whether they're going to elaborate just a little bit more, so Sony have got another showing, you know, another conference that they're going to do, you know, and that's... addressing any criticisms they have this way. Yeah, yeah exactly. triple A, get more triple A, less yeah, dark. What exactly, more they've still got. I mean, you know, the one thing that never showed was, and I thought, I actually at the, at the end they went right. We're going to leave you with a trailer for a highly anticipated uh, game, and I was thinking, here we go. Here's Final Fantasy VII. They're going to show episode one of that but it it, it, it oh, turned oh, it, Anthony. it's like so maybe maybe next year or the year after but it turned out <laughs> to be last of us too instead i mean other showings in on there was obviously we we've touched on detroit and last of us they showed shadow of colossus um look at the so shadow of colossus the remake of that looking looking very spectacular when you're running through the forest looked very good um but for me, obviously, the standout is going to be no surprise Spider Man. So they showed yep. um, they showed Insomniac Spider Man gave you a really good feel for the world of Spider Man of kind of what the you know, the characters that you're going to. They had Miles Morales, they had Mary Jane. They 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 showed some of the Water villains. Towers one and two. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there's well, that's what because that's it. That's when it was E3 when I my the thing that I didn't like about the trailers was Spider Man just destroyed so many water towers. <laughs> <laughs> in, that, in, in that trailer, I was like, "Why would you do that, man?" You know, and it's just like he's swinging through Manhattan. He's just taking out the water towers, just nonchalantly taking them out. Um, so I, I hope there's a trophy in there, which is you know, no harm, don't harm any water towers. <laughs> it's like, but um, but yeah. So Spider Man looks absolutely fantastic. It looks incredible. Again, annoyingly so. All all of they all they said was 2018. Well, I, th- I can imagine, especially with like the the larger AAA exclusive like that, they they're going to be quite cagey about it until yeah. it's actually ready to go. I can I can see that going right to the end. You know, this time next year, that's sort of mm. Christmas type uh, first party release because it's usually all in the the hype machine building up to Christmas next year. But um, yeah, if it's if if it carries on looking like it did at E three, which I think the last time I had an extended look at it because of the trailers. Um, yeah, that looks mm. that looks fun. It looks it, fun. It looks highly polished, and yeah, 
It could get me back into superhero games. Yes, indeed. I mean, it just looks up. I think there's going to be um, a few kind of quick time events in there as well, but that's okay because that will make you feel like Spider Man. You know, I don't know if they're trying to tease that you'll be Mars Morales as well as Peter Parker as Spider Man, but um, I just oh, I can't wait to just get my hands on that. Uh, I'll be interested to see where the release date is, whether you're saying like it will be holiday. It'll probably be holiday 2018. But Sony have had um, a big showing at the start of the year, haven't they? They seem to be. We yeah. don't care. We and, and I think that's what we should be doing now. You know, Microsoft and Sony should be almost and Nintendo should like let's just leave the holidays to your battlefronts and your battlefields and Call of Duties and 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 um, Assassin's Creed and we've got the rest of the year to play around with. And I think maybe we'll get a little bit more of that because it's definitely kind of Sony have been bringing a lot of big games out in the spring. You know, we had Horizon Zero Dawn, we had Zelda yeah. this year. You know, but this year has just been a bonkers year, so it's it's hard to kind of judge by this year. Yeah, spoiled for choice this year, definitely. Oh, absolutely. This has been a fantastic year of gaming. So they showed um, God of War, showed a bit more God of War, looks spectacular. Horizon Zero Dawn DLC um, was also shown, and then that was it, really. And then, like I say, they wrapped up with that gruesome, horrible uh, Last of Us 2 trailer, um, and then that was how they finished the show. That's how they yeah. left us all. I can imagine just there's at least like there's probably still some whooping and hollering in the audience, but everyone else was just sort of like that slow sort of like <laughs> I'm gonna go now. Thousand yard stairs. <laughs> yeah. Just clapping. It was uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was very it was a very interesting way to to finish the to finish the because uh, I thought at some point at one point I thought maybe it was Days Gone because they had they didn't show Days Gone, so maybe they're gonna show their PSX. That's ah. another one that's coming, that kind of big open world zombie game, but it was just yeah. Yeah. Went south really quickly. So that was the Sony conference, and like I say, I think they had a good good outing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I was I, honestly like I was really impressed because I think especially now in this day and age with games that live beyond that mu- that first initial month, like the the fact there are like twenty updates, and I I, I do want to stress this because like the fact they're trying to make twenty games live beyond that initial purchase mm. and play period, I think it is great that it's becoming more a thing where the 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 actual platform holders want to talk about it in their conferences to show the support for the, the games that should, in theory, carry on like Destiny yeah. for, for months, if not years, after their initial release. But, but yeah, um, sadly, though, the, 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 one, the one company that wasn't really shown at uh, the conference was Housemark. No. Um, and they've had some sad news this week that they are saying they're pulling out of the arcade business. Um, I think arcade in the loosest sense because they've uh, been tantalising us over recent years with the likes of uh, Stardust and um, Resigun, which was an absolute favourite of mine at the PlayStation launch. Um, the games that sort of tried to recapture that arcade feel, that, that sort of set that high score challenge going again, because I'm sure at the start of the PlayStation 4, you, me, Daz, and a few others were just playing Chase the Leaderboards at that point. Someone would set a new high score, that would set everyone back to their consoles until someone had beaten it, and like, it slowly by slowly, I'm sure Darren just beat us all out uh, to, <laughs> to the top of the scores. Um, but yeah, sadly, they're basically saying that the the sales just really aren't in this in this genre. They've tried over the last what seems like five, five six years, I think, especially with their love of Sony to to, to reinvigorate this era. In fact, twenty years as a whole. Um, but yeah, the the sales just aren't there. So they say they will be moving on to other genres. Mm. Uh, it's which is a bit of a shame because I've loved their take on. Yeah, classics. Because the, the style of Resogun with all its voxels and exploding backgrounds and the the looping around, that visualisation of that we had on that Spectrum games where you knew you'd go back to the start if you went round, but the fact they put it in 3D, put it in front of you, you could... They just did things, I thought, that were really clever. Really clever. And also, for what were simplistic games, you know, there was no mass, huge worlds or massive uh, spawns of AI. They then just put that excess power to... Th- Blowing the whole world up, and I really appreciated that so much. (laughs) Yeah, the um, Resogun was a visual treat. Even when you died in Resogun, it was you. It was joyous. It was a yeah. joyous. It was a joyous occasion. And then when they upped the uh, fidelity to 4K as well and 4K HDR, you know, you just really kind of got to just appreciate how incredibly gorgeous those games were. Yes. So, yeah. So it Proper is. A, it is. Cases. It is a shame to see them kind of stepping away from these bite-sized, repeatable kind of chunks. But at the same time, I guess it's it's interesting to see where they're going to go next. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the statement from them basically says that they're going to try something totally different and uh, something we won't expect from them. Um, and I think this is, I think as any developer wants to try new things after a while, admittedly, like, even from um, from Resogun to the likes of, oh, what was the last one they did? This is probably half the problem. Uh, next um, Machina. Next Machina, and I saw Alienation as well. Um they they tried different genres within it, but they were, as you say, like these these little bite sized things a lot of the time. So who knows? I mean, the the fact they've got a good name behind them, they've got a real caliber hmm. behind the the quality of their output means that they will, no doubt, be be assured whatever they turn their hand to will be good. But it's it's something I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they put out, especially as they say it's it's nothing that we could expect. So. I don't know. Is is this going to be some sort of like match three game like we've never seen before? <laughs> it will be the most gorgeous uh, voxel based match three game <laughs> that we. They go mobile. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just imagining they they reduce it down. So they they did that with you know like um, the the arcade machines, where it's just like we're going to reduce it down so that all the processing can be the effects. Like, what could be more reduced down than match three? <laughs> Freaking ray tracing going on in the background. It's amazing. We'll make so much money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yes, yes, we wish them well uh, yes. in their next endeavour. Indeed. So we'll we'll have to wait a couple of E3s or PlayStation experiences before we get an announcement because no doubt probably they will be um, so Sony exclusive. Are they they're, they're kind of part owned by Sony House Park? I don't or know. They... I've always thought they were just like second party, so mm. like not necessarily owned, but full. Fully Full on funded. in bed with Sony, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what they come up with next. Um, right, next piece of news is with me, and it's all about those three games, um, three games uh, on both Xbox and also PlayStation. So we've got Games with Gold first. Um, interesting month this, this month on uh, on Xbox. So we have Trackmania Turbo. So that game that everybody loved and was amazing, but no one bought, is now free, <laughs> is now free on, on Xbox, on Xbox Live, um, so it's available from today, it's, I've already downloaded it, I've been playing it, um, so it's available from today until the end of, until the 16th of November, um, so we have Trackmania Turbo on Xbox One, and then from the 16th of November to the 15th of December, we have Towers from the Borderlands, um, the, the Telltale game, so one of my favourite Telltale games, um, which is Tales from the Borderlands. Even if you're not a Borderlands fan or have played one and two, this is definitely uh, a game worth checking out. It's funny, it's well written, and it's just absolutely superb. So that's uh, so they're the games that we have on Xbox One, on Xbox 360, playable via backwards compatibility. Obviously, we've got Knights into Dreams. So the uh, the Sega arcade game. Uh, I remember buying my Knights into Dreams joypad. I still have it. Oh, the, the it first just, analog one. Yes, yeah. yeah, it was big round circle. It was gorgeous. Just thing. Uh, so, uh, so Nights into Dreams is available now. Um, is is available now, and then coming on the sixteenth of November, we have Deadfall. So, Deadfall Adventures. So, I tried to click on that to see what it is. I can't really kind of see that. It looks like a top-down kind of almost like a Lara Croft Curse of Osiris uh, kind of game. It, it looks like there's adventurers, possibly a cowboy. It's hard to say. Uh, Some but zombies yeah, with, with zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to maybe kind of it. It's it's a bit of Indiana Jones, but with a little bit of zombies. And yes, I honestly can't remember this one as well. No, like, no it's, me neither. It's, it's saying like recommended retail price of thirty nine ninety nine. So it must have been like a full blown disc release as well. But I clicked on the link and was looking at the images, and it still didn't trig. No, Does twig. No, I did like no. nope, there's nothing. <laughs> it's just come out. It's brand new. Uh, but no, Trackmania Turbo, obviously, and Tales from Borderlands are the big standouts. Um, yeah, Trackmania Turbo just looks. It looks. F- stunning and just plays really well i remember playing that at gamescom and was just absolutely blown away by it but i think maybe a forza game came out or something came out kind of very Some, close something to distract, it. the shiny yeah, distracted you exactly i got distracted straight away so that is the uh, free games with uh, with games of gold and then over on the playstation um we have a very interesting uh, month as well on playstation because we have worms battleground so the new worms that came out from uh, team 17 is now available um so that's a available on the PlayStation 4 we have Bound. Now, Bound um, came out, I think, last year. And Bound yeah. was a it was a Santa Monica studio game um, where you kind of play this. It looked like a ballerina and, and a bit of a platformer. So it was a bit like kind of Journey, but with a bit of platforming. It looked really interesting. It looked like a really interesting game. 
Yeah, I, I can remember seeing the trailers because it was it's got PSVR support for it as well, and so right. more than once I hovered over the uh, the buy button just 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 for something to play at the point in time. It it does look mesmeric mm. at, at points. So now it's yeah, this one definitely is worth a look. I think if anything, because you know it's a PSVR game itself, but uh, yeah, it it looks like one of these. You can't really explain it. Just try it. Yes, exactly. I'll stick a link to the PlayStation blog page, um, to the PS blog page, which will show you the kind of uh, trailers for all of these games. Um, but also kind of coming out on PSVR. So they've given you kind of Bound, which is PlayStation VR and PS Pro um, compatibility. But there is also another couple of bonus games. So we've still got that to you. That's still hanging around. And you've got to buy that. You've got to just download it. It's for free. <laughs> just do it. They're going to keep it there until everybody, all 67 million. Like- they want to try and sell us an expansion pack sooner or later. Yes. <laughs> you just can't think, why? Why is it still here? But also uh, this month, we also get the PSVR exclusive Until Dawn Rush of Blood, which was the on rails kind of shooter, um, quite scary, almost like a, a roller coaster ride. Yeah. Uh, so again, this was one of the ones I hovered over. I think when I first got my PlayStation VR, I was like, mm, "Shall I?" I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed Until Dawn. Shall I get this? You know, the, just do I want to be that scared? So, so I've, one of my friends got this when we uh, when we had like a PS. Well, we had a VR evening at work, so people brought in their Oculus and their Vive and the PSVRs, and. Uh, I I still to this day I'm not quite sure how they really tie in until to dawn uh, until dawn into this, because until dawn was this really almost cinematic horror where mm. you know people slowly got picked off one after one, and this is a carnival ride where you have just shooting things like there's th- something like this at Legoland. Um, <laughs> so I I quite like the fact they're extending the franchise into different areas, but yeah, I've always thought attaching the until dawn tag to this is is quite a stretch. Yeah, it's it's really bizarre. I don't know why they just didn't call it kind of Rush of Blood or or something like that, yeah. and just just have it as a carnival game. Because you're right, when people buy PSVR, they're just going to go through the store, and and this would be one of the games. You really don't need to have that name yeah, before the true. colon. <laughs> yeah, I think so, if anything, it, it always leads to that that confusion when people do play it. Going, this is not what I asked for. <laughs> this is the, where is all those teens that were all <laughs> get, getting it on in the woods? Where are they? Um, so also uh, out this month we have R Type Dimensions uh, for PlayStation Three. We have Ragdoll Kung Fu Fists of Plastic uh, also on PlayStation Three. Um, Dungeon Punks is uh, PlayStation Vita and also available on PlayStation Four. And Broken Sword Five Episode One and Two is also on Vita so quite a quite a packed quite a packed month for PlayStation Plus yeah good good mix across all four platforms so yeah so that's so that's the free games um i think we did this a couple of months ago where we just kind of as it's the start of a month we are the first of november today i thought i'd just kind of spend a quick moment just to kind of go through some of the standout games um that we've got for november just so you can ready ready yourself um so which have a listen to this list james and see which one kind of piques your interest if they can take you away from pick cross and mario and, <laughs> and and hopefully stardew valley so we've got uh november 3rd so this Friday, uh, as we're recording, we've got Call of Duty World War Two. So WW2. Um, it's, is, it's back. It's, it's been back. 10 years since the WW2s. It's back. It's now in full 4K and it's in your face. But I'm looking, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to this because, you know, every year I kind of, I do play the kind of, um, I play the Call of Duty games. I just play the campaign. Um, not really kind of a multiplayer guy for this. So I just play the campaign and then I normally, I used to then return it uh, or take it back and trade it in. But what I've done this year is I've, I'm renting it from Boomerang so I can just play it, play the campaign and then just, you know, and then just send it back. So I'm quite looking forward to just kind of jumping in to play this campaign cool uh, so. yeah, uh, call, call of duty is i think i've bounced off a long time ago i think especially since i've had a recent pang in recent years where i've i i think the historical shooters as well i just always feel a bit uneasy about playing and mm. uh I, th- I think what sealed the deal for me today was when i saw someone going up uh you know the beach bombs are dropping everywhere your, your comrades are falling by the side and a loot crate opens up in front of you <laughs> oh no so yeah tasteful <laughs> handling of the situation 
We'll, we'll cross that one off the list. Can you imagine if the loot crate opens and it's a new outfit and it's a French made <laughs> outfit that you can now wear on the beach as you're fighting? Oh, oh. talk about games done wrong. Um, no, I still want to play it. I still want to play it. And then coming out, <laughs> coming out on the seventh of November, we have a Neo, um, the complete edition. So this is coming out on PC. Um, so this is the kind of uh, full, kind of sixty frames, four K complete edition of Neo, uh, which came out on PlayStation earlier this year. Um, we also have a big favourite of yours, James, Sonic Forces. Um, I thought this was, was a quality <laughs> list. I thought we vetoed the chaff before we read these out. And so this is also coming out on November the 7th. And I believe, um, missing from this list, we also have Super Lucky's Tale is November the 7th as well, because that's the same day as uh, Xbox One X. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, I, I don't think I've played that one, but I'm still very confused how it made the way over from Oculus to uh, to Xbox, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, it's just like after Palmer Lucky kind of did what he did, uh, they obviously just wanted to get rid of that. And Microsoft was like, yeah, we'll, we'll buy that. We need a platform. We'll we'll so um, November the 10th, we have Doom on Nintendo Switch. I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued by this. I, in some ways, that I really hope they do a demo because I want to see how this this runs. I'm sure I've said previously that if, if I really wanted to play Doom, I'd have probably played Doom by now. But I think this is such an interesting release because it basically shows that Bethesda are backing this and so I really want this to do well. Yes. I'm I'm actually I've added this to my boomerang list. Oh okay. So I so I can kind of have a go because I played through Doom last year. I absolutely loved Doom. It was just such a great game. Um it, it was one that I bought just on a whim kind of on a, on a Friday. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't no games. I was waiting for a game to come out and so I just bought it. I thought I'll give it a go and I just ended up absolutely loving it and it was just such a fantastic it was such a great game such a such a like i'm just gonna just gun and do all of this crazy stuff and it really was just kind of uh just just jump in and immerse yourself so that was so that's doom coming out on nintendo switch we then have mario party the top 100 coming out on 3ds i, I didn't even realize this was coming out to be yes. honest it's another one of these why, why are you putting it on the 3ds but yeah, yeah. So okay. they've they've basically created the best the hundred best mini games from all of the ten Mario Party games, and they've basically just put it into a bundle. Fair dues, fair dues. Um, mini games yeah. are plenty. I, I just always think mini game collections on a handheld are slightly curious because I'm sure they've got the every time I log onto Twitter nowadays they're trying to advertise the new Kirby game to me. Obviously, they've been data mining, <laughs> um, but. Again, it's, a, it's the new Kirby 3DS game is a is a four player battler, and with Mario being a four player like mini game collection, I just I just occasionally think that they need to, yeah, they want to support the 3DS, but just take a look and maybe the Switch is the better place for these party games. Yes, absolutely. You'd be much better kind of just like having that docking that four Joy Cons, you know, just yeah. breaking over the two Joy Cons, break them into four four controllers, and then just play those mini games. That is just you know, randomly choose ten and just just off you go. I mean, I've always had great fun with Mario Party games, like on the N sixty four and the GameCube. They're always just great fun. Yeah. No, I I enjoyed the board game aspect of those games as well. So I just was you know a a Switch version would be perfect to play on the plane or play on the train or whatever. It's just but yeah it's 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 interesting that this is a uh, 3ds yeah i mean obviously the, the the fact that it's coming out now there are probably business decisions being made a while back hmm. but uh yeah I, I i honestly hope the 3ds does start moving away in you know 2018 but uh Obviously, someone's still backing it over there. Yeah, I think you know they they probably edge their bets, going, "Well, what, what do we do if Nintendo Switch doesn't take off? Yeah. What is do we this, do? Yeah. yeah, is this another Wii U? <laughs> yeah, let's just keep our finger on the 3DS because we've always got that. And then hopefully, now that they're selling it by by the bucket loads, and they've they've changed their expectation of sales for Nintendo Switch to to now kind of an extra seven to ten million. You know, they they hopefully they will just kind of let the 3DS go. Um, so the continuing coming out in November on the we have Need for Speed Payback that's on November the 10th um, that's across all platforms November 14th is LA Noir LA Noir on uh, Nintendo Switch PlayStation 4 and Xbox One so on, on PS4 Pro Xbox One X it's running in 4K so you get those really weird scrunchy faces on in 4K now <laughs> <laughs> there's, I'm sure there's multiple GIFs going on there but yeah I, I can remember just seeing this when it came out and just thinking this is an absolute technical marvel in terms of animation but 
sadly let down by the gameplay yes i did finish it i, I always love that when you ask someone a question and they just kind of has sheepishly looked away or kind of like <laughs> ah, I, you're lying i can tell and i just I, really really enjoyed that, it's the, that it's mechanic the, it's the stage directions is like look shifty Yes. Actually, no shiftier, shiftier. <laughs> yeah. Not give subtle, it to me. Shifty. Give it to me. And then, uh, then continuing on the fourteenth, we have Lego Marvel Superheroes Two. Uh, I'm not sure which one of us will be downloading that day one on potentially Xbox and Switch. <laughs> 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 Um, so I'm really looking forward to Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Um, it, it, this this game just looks it looks fantastic. It's got all of the um, it's got all of the movies, the later movies as well. And it just it's, it's it's been a while since I've been into a Lego like played a Lego game. So it's been a good kind of a uh, twelve months. So it'd be so it'd be good to kind of jump back in. November seventeenth, we've got Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon on 3DS. And then also on uh, November the seventeenth, we have Star Wars Battlefront Two. So oh. is this a, this must be a day one for you, oh, I'm sure. This is I've already pre ordered. I pre ordered. I've pinned it on my Xbox. So I'm just sitting there waiting. Every now and then, not I even just, boomeranging. Not even boomeranging. This is this is a game that I did. It's got single player co op. It's got a single player campaign. Um, and then obviously there's all the multiplayer. And it just I played the beta. Really enjoyed the beta. It's interesting to see that they've changed the loot boxes slightly. They've made some changes. They've listened to all of the feedback. Um, they've gone. This game will tank if we put it out right now with all of these loot boxes. <laughs> so we need to change it. So they've made some changes. Um, but I I can't wait for this. I can't wait to play the single player campaign that spans from. Return of the Jedi all the way through to uh, Force Awakens, so I'm really looking forward to really kind of jumping in this. And it, it oh, I, I'm, I'm even so nerdy about this. I'm thinking about reading the. There's a book um, that kind of happens before. It gives you a bit of information on Delta Squad, and I'm just, I'm going. I really need to read this before November seventeenth. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Elder Scrolls um Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim is out on Nintendo Switch. It's uh, <laughs> which is just but for all those of you who are waiting, for all those of you who have missed the last 5 years. Here we go. Absolutely. <laughs> for that one person that hasn't played it. And then we have Sims 4 um, is also coming out on that same day. So on November 17th, we have Pokemon, Star Wars, uh, Elder Scrolls, and Sims 4. And then rounding out the month on November 21st, we have um, The Impatient, which is based in the Until Dawn uh, environment. So it's, again, this is a PSVR game, uh, which is in the um in the asylum where you are or the the medical institution where you are in until dawn it's all kind of it's it's back in time and just when that was actually kind of a full-blown asylum and and you're there so it looks it looks creepy it looks interesting uh it might be worthwhile kind of jumping in done by the same people who did until dawn which is super massive games um so it's those guys as well so it looks like it could be an interesting one and then rounding out the month we have resident evil revelations on nintendo switch yeah it's 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 a packed month. I guess we're getting to this time of year where you know everyone's ready, lining up for Christmas. But when you actually list them out all one by one, there is there is a fair amount of triple A ness going on in this one, and uh, you just hope everyone can uh, can make room for each other. Yes, absolutely. They're just and then also you know at some point um, we're going to have the DLC they, they're still saying they're on track to release it this year Nintendo have said they're still on track to release it this year, but it's oh, the, the DLC Zelda. for yeah the champions. So yeah. All of the amiibos. It's another dungeon, isn't it? I th- well, I think it's kind of. I don't know. I don't know what it is because it's it's the curse of the he or the the curse. I'm thinking of um. I'm thinking of um. Destiny. It's the it's all of the guardians. So all of the guardians that you unlock as you're playing. It's 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 a DLC around them. So and there has been. Um, I think on the Nintendo site there is an amiibo set that's coming out on the 15th of November. So it would make sense if maybe that kind of tied so into ties the game. In around then. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, guess so. I guess they're far more flexible being digital only at this point in time. Mm as well yes so so it's really it's really nice to see nintendo kind of embracing pre-downloads and dlcs and things like that really kind of coming into the into the present <laughs> yes it's, it's taken them long enough but it's, it's good to welcome them but they're finally here in 2017 yes. they finally made it and then yes. the last piece of these for me um is more of a kind of a, a psa and a link that i'll stick into the show notes but did you know that if you're about to buy a, a xbox one x you can download you can pre-download all of your 4k assets uh, for a lot of the games over the last uh, week i've been noticing there's been more and more 
more kind of uh, 4K assets have been downloading. So I, so my setup, the way that I've got it set up at home is we have our primary console, which is our Xbox One S. We have a two terabyte hard drive plugged into the back of that. And then what I've done through some settings that are on the Xbox Dash that are in the system settings, and I'll put a link to a really good article on uh, Windows Central that, that takes you through this, you can actually say download the 4K assets for the games that you have in your library. So where your Xbox will automatically update with new updates for games, it's actually just kind of downloading the 4K assets. So because I have all of these downloading to my hard drive, it means that next Tuesday, when the Xbox One X arrives, I'll just be able to unplug the the Xbox One S and just plug everything straight back in and I'm ready to go. So I won't need to worry about downloading gigs and gigs of data. I they'll already be there, kind of sitting there waiting on on my on my external drive. So this looking is looking for a way to get out. Looking for can't wait to just be on my display and uh, just there. And the, and the great thing about it, this Windows um, Windows Central article, it does a, a cool little kind of tip where if you hold down um, both of your front bumper but well, your front buttons on your controller so that's the hamburger button and the back button and <laughs> and then if you hit the if you hit the two analog sticks at the top so you hit the two bumpers at the top it will actually give you an about page on that on that game so if you go to your kind of my games and apps hit those four buttons all at once it will actually show you kind of a, a lots of information there about the game when it was last updated and also what platform your latest assets for and i'm seeing kind of scorpio and Xbox One X code names. It's still saying Durango uh, for a lot of games, but I'm seeing that sort of stuff um, for for the game. So you can hover over like uh, fours or seven, click those four buttons, and it will say you have those assets for Xbox One X. So you know um, wh- whether it's there or not. So there's there seems to be like I say over over the last uh, week or so, we've had some we've had quite a lot of assets have been downloading for gears and for forza and and other games as well so it's uh it, it's quite it's quite exciting to kind of see those coming down and getting ready yeah it's getting to that tantalizing stage isn't it where it's mm. almost new console time but uh it's it's a weird one though isn't it and i don't know if you found the same with the the pro last year when you got it where it's it's the same but different yes. and i i think that because this is my first like um same generation upgrade because I, I very rarely upgrade anything. Like, I, I I don't have that many tablets so across my course of my life. I just like use them until they're dead, and so I just usually get surprised by how how shiny the next one is. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's it's weird that it will just be a case of download to your hard drive, then plug in the new one, and away you go. There's because I always found this real great sensation of just like installing everything into the AV unit and then slipping that brand new disc into it, but. It's just getting used to the new era where actually no, I've downloaded it already and it's ready to go and it's oh yeah. it's, there's there's less fanfare but thankfully there's less fanfare. Absolutely. I mean, I have um, I have the day off, so I'm using one of my I'm only using one of my time off in lieu days um, to kind of have the day off and just enjoy it and just kind of play the Xbox One X. Uh, and yeah, I mean that's that's going to be fantastic for me because it means that I don't have to wait a couple of hours for the for one game to download because they're all going to be there. You know, it's always going to be what game do I play first? You know, I think it will probably be something like Forza for you know maybe Horizon. You know, stick Horizon on and see what that looks like in 4K. Then Gears. I'm sure during that day i'm just going to be hopping between games and go oh yes look <laughs> Taste, at that. tasting all of them <laughs> indeed this is i mean for me you know i've been talking about this on the pod for 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 ages this is this is where i've wanted to be this 4k hdr gaming box and this is kind of this is this for me is i actually found myself and i'm i'm okay i'm i'm confident enough to to admit it i found myself the other day actually genuinely getting excited about the xbox one x you know that almost to the point with oh it's coming out in 10 days oh it, it, and, uh, and i'm finding like i did with wolfenstein i am with uh with forza most sport 7 that i just don't want to play these games because i know that shinier versions coming out in like a week's I, time but I, w- I want to give you a tip like, yes play a little of it because then you'll really notice the difference. Yes, yes, yes. Like at least, like I've I've had a friend recently who's who's been lucky enough to dabble with certain parts of new hardware, mm. and he was saying he was playing old Forza, 
And then he suddenly realised that everything had updated and it was new 4K Forza, and he was like, "Oh my word!" Oh, right. And he felt he felt the benefits so much more because he had at least experienced it in the in the previous state. So that proper wham of just like, "Here's your HDR, here's your 4K." And it's yes, just, yes. Yeah. Oh, no, that's a good tip. That's a good tip because you're right. You know, I, I mean, I have been playing Forza Motorsport Seven. I haven't been playing it as much, and and even now, you know, because it's in HDR, looks fantastic. And but I'm just like, oh, this next week, this is going to look even better. But oh, you're right. I will, I will make sure that I kind of have committed all of those games to memory so i know exactly what they are <laughs> and so i do get before, that kind of oh, this is fantastic and it's really funny because like nicola said oh do you want me to take next tuesday off as well because i've got some extra holiday and i'm like no no <laughs> no i know i want the telly i don't want to go for cake i don't want to sit there watching you play stardew valley because we're like we just got that kind of so uh, and i'm not going down to the movie room because all the floor is off at the moment so i'm not i can't go down there so i was like no it's okay you just go to work dear i mean i'll be fine you know so I just I'll be in nose pressed up against the window waiting are you taking the day off as well James are you got like a day off or you just like play it when you get home um I'll play it when I get home more more because work's really busy rather than anything else Um, yes because I I I I look back to I remember when I got my first 1080p telly Mm -hmm. and I'd had a you know I'd got a 360 prior to that but you know that it was hooked up through scars can you imagine that now I hooked it up through scars (laughs) um and so I got my first 1080 tally, and so I was ready to all hook it up, and you know, it's like these these wonderful things of component and HDMIs, and I can remember taking that day off, and I had lined up for me Halo 3, you know, I'd played it already, but Halo 3 was one of the games I wanted to experience in this new Christmas, I had Dirt, like the first Dirt Rally, yeah. get, I hadn't looked at that one, and Shadow Run. Don't judge me. I had Shadow Run. Um, two, the last two games right. I did, had not played before because I just wanted to experience them in like the the brand new Christmas that this new uh, this panel would afford me. Um, and do, I I I still remember how awesome Dirt looked. Mm. Just like compared to what other previous racing games had looked like on my CRT, just how wonderful it looked. But the the true impact was from Halo that I'd played before and then played after. And so there is part of me that is actually quite jealous that I'm not going to take that day off and just like experience that 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 freshness with everyone else. But I just have to try and squeeze some some Forza in or something in the evening. And uh, yeah, I've, I've, the, just just the they're actually updating. Thinking about it, they're updating Halo Three again. Like yes. they, they've got those press releases like it's going to be in 4K and in HDR. Maybe this is what will take me to the next generation of of gaming graphics. Because <laughs> the whole Master Chief collection has been patched, hasn't it? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll still play in the original graphics. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I do, I do think that when, um, when we're all kind of set up and everything's kind of gone, I do think we need to kind of put together the Forza Car Club Club, um, the Lost Spark Car Club Club, and Forza Horizon, and kind of you know, have another go at Forza Horizon. You know, kind of yep. give it that final fanfare with oh, kind of my word. a lot of us going, "Wow, have you seen these graphics?" <laughs> the, the, the people winning are the people without the new Xboxes because they're actually racing. Everyone, yes. oh, my words! Look it's, at all the HD of the R's. It's just so shiny. But yeah, though no, I can't, I cannot. I mean, my my um, my kind of playlist or my activity on that day will just be crazy. It will just be game after game after game, like little kind of snippets of everything. <laughs> but but I've actually, I'll stick a, I'll stick a link in the show notes because um, Xbox Wire, um, they they put together a really good um, article about all of the games that are getting 4K HDR bumps. Um, all of those games there, it's kind of all there. It's all um, available on it. Um, xbox one uh xbox wire so i'll stick a link in the show notes um for all of those games and they're just there is a real bevy of games that are getting kind of 4k yeah. hdr like i said i'm saving assassin's creed for it so uh yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to that and just almost going through my back catalog and finding out what has had a bump Mm, mm, absolutely yeah. Yeah, that's it it'll be quite quite nice to kind of have a look at this list and go ooh, okay ooh, yeah so it'll be quite good to uh to kind of see that i also saw in the list a certain game a certain piratey game is also kind of there for, for a full kind of uh or full bifter experience it's it's so shiny i bet <laughs> all, the, all the artists at work have got proper like well the environment artists at work have got proper 4k hdr tellies and you know you you can't get small 4k hdr tellies so they just have them mounted on the wall so every time you go past you're just staring at sunsets <laughs> it's just like wow it's just so cool 
Yeah, I bet. I, I bet that looks absolutely fantastic. It looks, and again, that's another game. Kind of, you know, obviously wait for the alpha to kind of roll around and then jump into that to have a look and see what see how gorgeous that looks as well. I, I, I feel I should stop tooting my own trumpet at this yes, point. So yes, 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 very cool. But that's it. So that's Xbox One X. Like I say, I'll put a link in the show notes. Great article by Windows Central that just shows you how you can download those assets, get kind of Recore, Resident Evil, Rocket League, um, Sea of Thieves, all of that sort of stuff is all kind of there. Um, and those assets, get them ready. Get them ready for the seventh. So James, the last piece of news is with you. Yeah, and to be honest, as much as I should be towing the company line, it's like, you can take your 4K and your HDRs and quite <laughs> frankly stuff them. Um, because the game of the year has been announced already. And Nintendo... Uh, we've been off air for a couple of weeks, so I feel this is worth bringing back because I'm overjoyed. Animal Crossing has been announced and it's coming out towards the end of November. Uh, the twist being, it is coming to your mobile, so on Android and iOS. Um, yes, it is coming to your phones and rather being the full Animal Crossing experience you might have had on any other Nintendo platform, uh, they're taking it outside in quite an aggressive trailer, as far as I'm concerned. Isabel basically just wanted to, you know, have let's 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 take these outside. But rather than trying to beat you up, she has actually announced that Animal Crossing is opening a camping uh, camping site, and uh, so the new Animal Crossing is actually set in the outdoors, where you and uh, living in a camper van, uh, mm-hmm. as far as I can tell from yep. the uh, the trailer. So you can still deck out your house slash camper van how you see fit. But rather than modelling a village, you have to model a campsite. And as you put in new features, it'd be you know, like seats or swings or, or swimming baths, um, you attract new campers, which I guess would be the analogy to, to um, uh, villagers from the previous game. Um, so it's still got this real nice essence of Animal Crossing to it, but I love how they've actually changed it to be slightly more adapted, be, be, be as you remember it, but just tweak slightly for the mobile platform. It, it I think it, it sits really nicely, whereas, uh, you know, Pokemon Go try to take you around everywhere and put you in the real world itself. Animal Crossing has taken that essence of being out and about, but just given you a camper van and let you sleep beneath the stars. And I'm really, I cannot lie, I am really looking forward to this. I've already dug out my battery pack that I bought directly, <laughs> specifically for Pokemon Go. That has, wow. That has had very little use since then. Um, and I'm, I'm just eager to start like poking around, setting up my camper van and start pimping out my little campsite. So what's the what's the kind of moment to moment gameplay for this? What's it's, it's it's basically as mundane as Animal Crossing in fairness. So like I you you do go around you you go you've got different areas of the map that you can go to because there's a proper like map you can go to the beach you can go to your campsite you can go into I think there's like a little town area possibly um, I might have rem- rem- remembered from the trailer but you go into these different areas and there's different activities so you can go and look for some woods you can trade with other animals who might be looking for things you go and do um odd jobs for animals being delivering things or or merely that classic if you've caught a fish from Mm. the island for the island has returned you can then give that to an animal and they might give you um a a t-shirt or an element for your garden or so but the difference is because it is at the end of the day this is a mobile i don't know if it's free to play um, no, it but is. It's definitely, yeah. no, it's it is free, free to, play. to play. Okay, yep. but it definitely has got microtransactions in there because when you build elements for your campsite, it asks for materials. Mm. So the examples they use in the actual uh, trailer is like you need some wood to go and build like benches and what have you. And of course, the, that wood might be in short supply in certain areas, so you can maybe top up your uh, virtual <laughs> currency with some real currency. Um, so you can definitely see how there is they they've got a little little nook in there, shall we say, a real world nook. Um, but yeah, it it seems to be very much the Animal Crossing core, just transplanted into the uh, in, into the outside world. Um, You're gonna spend I, well, so much money, aren't you? <laughs> I I am gonna be so good. I'm gonna try. Them. I ended up. I think I put thirty quid in the end to Pokemon Go. Right, and I didn't regret that because. I put in a lot of time to that. I felt that was a good amount of you know, money to, to value mm-hmm. ratio. Uh, other people are probably just spitting out coffee listening to that statement. But <laughs> um, I can see myself not spending anything because I just enjoy that prodding of Animal Crossing. Like I, d- I never have felt the need to play it compulsively. Animal Crossing to me has always been something that I pick up, play for 15, 20 minutes, 
a day, maybe, you know, once in the morning, once in the evening, and I can put it down. Mm -hmm. So when it takes like 72 hours for you to build an amenity in your campsite, hey, I'm cool with that. Just leave it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think I have the self uh, self restraint to actually be able to do that. Um, um, if it, I I do wonder whether it might get a bit more nefarious later on. But that's the the, the cynicism of being burned by other free to play games mm. um, rather than Nintendo's. So we'll see, we'll see. But I am I am really looking forward to to this moment. Yes, I think Ali, Ali is as well. She basically for for the last eighteen months since they announced this Animal Crossing, she had basically said like as soon as it's announced i'm upgrading my phone as soon as it's announced i'm upgrading my phone so superb in the end she ended, she upgraded a couple of months ago and she was like yes did it at the right time so excellent stuff now, i i am incredibly intrigued by this by this game because it looks it looks fantastic and you know a, a sim- similar to you there there has been kind of other three to play games that i've been i've been i've enjoyed you know i i, I enjoyed simpsons tapped out you know with that when that was when that was mm-hmm. uh there but then i upgraded my ipad i had it on ipad upgraded my ipad and it wiped my save and i just couldn't go back and do that all over again but i had no. fun you know and and the same as you you know it was you would get notifications to say okay that's happened now you've got to wait another seven hours and i was happy just to every now and then just just fire it up just move it on and then but just enjoy it so i'm really interested and really kind of i can't so it's coming out at the end of november yeah they've basically been quite vague with the date although they do say end of november so you know probably three weeks before it hits or something right because it's available now in australia isn't it i think australia seems to be the the testers for for mobile games yeah, they, they, they've described it as a limited test, so I haven't really looked into what it was. Um, friend of friend of the show, Matt, did did send me a picture to say he'd logged in oh. to it, um, but then felt really guilty and then deleted it. So, um, so I think he's waiting for the pure full version as well. But uh, yes. So, is there? Do you know if there is? Um, will you be able to share stuff amongst your friends? Is it kind of a bit like the kind of the the first Mitomo, where you can kind of pop in and out, or even if it's just asynchronous? I, I th- it does look like it might be asynchronous because they did show in the trailer that you can meet other players. Right. So I don't know whether that's going to be populated from your friends list or or just random uh, pulled down from the central servers or what have you. So. I would hope that in some way, shape, or form, I could visit your campsite. Yes, yes. because that that was uh, that was for me like a key part of the last couple of handheld games that you could go and visit other people's creations. Hmm. Because the joy is that everyone sculpts them in their own unique fashion, and so you want to be able to go and poke around and say, "Oh, you've done that! Hmm. Oh, that's cool. Maybe I can try and steal that and take it back to mine." And what have you? It's it's as much as like each world is in its own isolation. It's nice just being able to go and pop your nose in every now and again yes yes so as well as all those bevy of awesome games coming we've also got this as well to kind of keep <laughs> us when we're not in front of a tv we've got this as well so which is fantastic as we have we triple wielding what uh, it's uh, assassin's creed in in 4k next to stardew valley next to animal crossing <laughs> yes <laughs> Way couldn't be any better than that. Time it's, slicing, it, exactly. Awesome, and that is about it for this episode. Huge thank you for listening. Don't forget, you can keep up with us at gamersoflostspark.com. You can also find us on Facebook, on Twitter, we're at Lost Spark Pod. You can also find us on YouTube and also the Games of Lost Spark PS4 community and Xbox One Club. James, where can people catch up with you? You can find me as Big Sheep on Twitter, Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. Excellent stuff. For me, I am Chessman on Xbox Live and Nintendo Switch. PS hyphen Chessman on the PlayStation Network and Chessman UK on Twitter. Don't forget, if you have any feedback, please send it to our email address. That's feedback at gamersandlostspark.com. So that's about it. I'll catch up with you next week. Say bye, James. Bye, James. <laughs>